Hello, everyone, and welcome to the best of the CU podcast. This is a special recording. We haven't done this ever before. Why not? Why we not haven't. put together a list of the, the, the funniest, weirdest, strangest, most controversial segments of the CU podcast and link them all together for you to listen to and enjoy it? That's why we're here. That's why we're here, Ian. We're excited to do this, right? Yes. I'm happy to be doing this recap show. It should be interesting to look at. These were these were voted on by people uh, via Twitter. Um, not not there was no vote, but people were suggested and compiled this list. And I think this list com- has just about everything that I can think of. Um, it's a big one in terms of um, the breadth of the of six and a half years of the CU podcast. Almost <laughs> yes, <laughs> the reasons why you listen to us. Yeah, I, I mean, you know, I, I could probably put in a couple more Eans yelling at me, but you know. There's a couple of fun ones in here. Maybe the Toys R Us one recently will make the list. But anyway, so here you go. You're going to have uh, the best of the CU podcast. Starting off first, Ian, is going to be a, a certain tale from the game store where uh, someone might have r- run out with a, a crate that was marked free. That's right. It's the free free bin. The free bin. On the best of the CU podcast. So um, I got a story. Tales from the Tales game from store. The yeah. game Mail store. Put a on yeah. that. Yeah. Put I mean, <laughs> or Kieran can. I can't. Right like every week's not going to be a, a, a gem, but uh, I had a guy come in um, towards the end of the day, at like six o'clock, uh, in La Mesa, and he comes in, and he's got a skateboard, and he's got one of those massive, like I am recently homeless backpacks. Um, What's an I'm recently homeless backpack? One of those huge backpacks. That oh, has, like the rucksacks that, that go camping? Like, yeah, that has like everything. You can hold it. like 100 pounds in it. Right. So he comes okay. in and he's like, hey, uh, you guys, you know, he's, he's off. This guy's off. Like, l- like meth. Didn't do too much meth. Did like, uh, you know, he was trying to do some social meth, I think. So is there there's social, social meth? meth. I, think, I think he was going after some... I think he Moderate just, use? I think he did a social amount of meth before coming into the fucking store. Um, and so he's like a little off, but, you know, he's 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 got these questions. And he's like, so, I, I, yeah, can I, I need to sell some stuff. And I'm like, let me, let me see what you have. So over in the corner, he opens his bag, his fucking bag of, that contains the world, his Santa sack. And goes through and grabs all these games. He's like, you, you guys buy like, I got some good PS3 games. And I'm like, yep, 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 yep. <laughs> so he puts them on the counter and they're like, I mean, they're just shot to shit, which is what I was expecting. What, what, what condition? What does that mean? Oh, scratched, uh, okay. you know, top scratches on the paint, scratches on the bottom. Uh, I mean, they were, they were a mess. Even he picked up, like after I looked at one, he picked one up and he's like, oh, oh, these are too scratched. Like he even knew. Yeah, he even knew, <laughs> and it made me think. Uh, he boy, found them. Yeah, I found them or stole them. <laughs> so I don't know. But anyways, I'm like, I can't, I can't take these. So he keeps asking, like, and then he uh, afterwards he just keeps asking, what, what, what about this memory card? Well, what about you know this controller? And I'm like, dude, I can't. I don't. I'm not taking oh. any of this stuff. <sighs> so the conversation's going fine. So anyways, he goes to leave, and he's like, he sees the free bin. And he goes, oh, free? I'm like, mm-hmm. All of it? Yes. And he, like, starts rooting around. Now, there was a uh, rock band drum set in there. Okay. And uh, a couple other things in there. I don't remember what else. I just know the rock band drum set was the big one. So he's looking at it, and I can tell that he's thinking, well, okay, this is free. Maybe I can take this and make money elsewhere. Sure. I don't give a shit what he does with it. If it's free, have fun. So he's like... Oh, cool. So I can I can take this stuff. And I'm like, yeah, just take it out of the bin. So I'm helping someone else. And then I look and I realize that the whole bin's gone. Everything's gone. Like, OK, how, how much stuff was in the bin? I mean, it was it was a I mean, it was a it was a full milk crate. Like, okay. like this. I mean, it was full stuff, but you know, it says free bin. You know, no one else has ever tried to take the bin before. So I, 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 I look and it's just everything is gone. The bin, everything, it's just gone. What else was there? Uh, it was just, it was, like I said, I don't remember what else was in there, but it's usually cases for portable systems. Okay. Um, 
it's usually cases for portable the little systems. zip ones zipper ones yeah okay. uh usually like uh like chargers for like wii remotes and stuff like okay. that uh you, you know it's usually uh, giveaway items from like a collector set yeah like it's just yeah exactly like a little statue or yeah, something like little statues and stuff like that those are things that we put in the free bin so i don't know exactly what was in there i just remember seeing the big the big drum set so i'm like oh man he took the bin <laughs> he, the he took bin. he took the bin i was like you know i mean it's not a huge deal but i'm like we've used that bin for ever it's like, it's like take a penny leave a penny almost yeah <laughs> you, you don't expect someone to take all the pennies <laughs> right you don't expect like someone to take the actual bin oh he took the actual no, bin yeah he took the actual he ganked bin. the bin yeah he picked up that's not part of the freebie <laughs> no no that's what i'm getting at the the bin is not free the stuff in the bin is free, but everything was gone. Like I look, everything was gone. The bin was just gone. He must have picked it up and walked out the store with it. So free bin. He thought the bin was free. So you gotta be. It's another loophole. So I'm helping the guy. And I'm like, oh man. I was like, he took. Well, that's not what I meant. But all right, whatever. So you know, the customer laughs. I bring him up. Whatever. He leaves. So it's about quarter to eight. And I hear, you know, the step on the, the metal, basically. Like, you can always hear when someone's coming over sure. there. So I look up, and it's the dude. Okay. And he's like, oh, just returning your bin. Thanks a lot, man. And puts the bin down on the ground. And is like, have a good night. And turns around and walks out. And it was just the strangest thing. Because, like, I, I just... He knew it was wrong to take the, the actual plastic bin. <laughs> so, <laughs> he knew that was over the line. Was just, like, <laughs> I mean, I, dude, what, I, did you, did, what did you say to him? I, I was like, uh, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't say, what the fuck? Why no, did you I take just, it? I was just like, thanks. Because, because, yeah, well, technically, you can't say, why did you take all the free stuff when you don't have a limit on the free no, stuff? No, you can take all the free stuff. That's fine. Take all the free stuff. We don't want it. That's why it's free. But don't take my goddamn bin. <laughs> So so he took it all. Well, what do you think he did with his free stuff? I don't know. I have no idea. Selling it at the swap meet. If you're trying to get money, to trade it for more uh, moderate meth use, usage. Yeah, I, I don't know. He wants to up his meth game from social to, I don't know, to, heavy, to, to heavy, intermediate use. But yeah, so within the span of like two hours, he came, grabbed everything, left with the bin, and then came back and gave me the bin back. And it's just odd because, I don't know, I don't think those games were his. Um... And then he was like, he was. I probably uh, found them. They're all sure, messed up. Yeah. Or, uh, but yeah, I, I mean, it was nice of him. I guess is the thing. It was. It was nice. It was thoughtful. It was thoughtful that he came back and gave me the bin gave back. back. The bin back. The because bin back. because if when it left, I was like, well, that's that. We, there was just a misunderstanding here, apparently, and I'm never going to see that bin Free again. bin. Oh, Free bin. <laughs> now, to me, it would have been funnier if he dumped all the contents out and just took the bin. Bin. Because <laughs> that's something I, that's something that you see like, out of like a three studios thing. Oh, yeah. free bin. Free all right, bin. what's all this shit? I just want the bin. The yeah. bin's more valuable than the, you know, the rock band drum set on there. How, how old was this guy? 20s, 30s? Hard, 20s. Hard yeah. to with meth. Meth ages you like 25. 40 years. Yeah. Yeah, 25. You can tell it was just starting to age him. He's just... To Looking, what? looking, just a little bit like a balloon that's losing some air. <laughs> getting just those a little those, withered. Getting those light surface wrinkles, the withering. Yeah. Um, was he dressed okay, or was it? You know, was it definitely social, or this was coming becoming a lifestyle? He was, he was dressed okay, and he you always gonna look at someone's shoes. That's how you tell. And, and he didn't. Um, I could tell that there would probably be an odor problem within a a day or two, but at that point he was he was holding it down. Okay. All right. So, hey, by the way, you're not clean shaven this week. No. When I say by the way, I'm not associating your look with meth. But you were clean shaven last week, and now you're not. You tried it for a week. Yeah. I mean, I, every time I do it, I don't like it. So you, you look very, very baby faced. Oh, yeah. I, I miss it. Remember the first podcast when you had the Prince Valiant look? It was yeah. great. Yeah. Yeah. That was when I was growing the hair out. That was fantastic. I missed those days. I had the same well, bushy hair. I love, going on okay well Ian, thanks for uh tales from the game store the game store store echo 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 i was excited ian for this movie called star trek beyond that was coming out but something in the teaser trailer really caught your eye and ears i'm a big on amount of pfn <laughs> find out what that was right now on the best of the cu podcast uh, the Star Trek Beyond trailer. Jesus fucking Christ. The third in the new trilogy. This was supposed to be really attached to Star Wars. 
And you know what? You can if if that's the case, you can tell it was cut that way because this is not cut like a Star Trek trailer at all. J.J. Uh, Abrams directed the first two. Right. Justin Lin directed this one. He's a guy that did basically help revive the Fast and the Furious franchise. And oh, you can tell by watching this. Yes, you can. At least from the trailer, uh, because I love the Beastie Boys. You love the Beastie Boys. Sabotage is a great song. Rest in peace, M- MCA. Uh, Sabotage is the song trailer, but this is cut like a straight up action movie. Which okay. A lot of the Star Trek movies are. Mostly, most of the Star Trek movies were action movies, especially yeah. from Next Generation on. They sort of said, oh, this slower sci-fi morality and ethics conversation. We don't need that. We'll just have a shoot the Borg for an hour and a half. That's fine. But let's try to keep some of your... Let's try to keep some of it in Star Trek. From this trailer, it's just people jumping around, spin kicks. You have a female alien that looks like a ripoff of Gamora. They figured, oh, Gamora was big in Guardians of the Galaxy. We'll do our version and give her white skin. And we'll have her dress the same way in leather and do spin kicks. That's what I'm getting from this trailer. People hanging from cliffs. People hanging from cliffs and jumping and... A motorcycle! <laughs> a, a motorcycle! Kirk, I guess, got that replicator and got, <laughs> got in the replicator and got, a, got a, 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 an off, a, off-road motorcycle or moped or something is doing jumps. And it comes out in July. It, it looks terrible from this teaser. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to say. And I like the first two Star Trek movies. Uh-huh. Uh, but... I always say this, Star Trek is much better on TV, because not saying Star Trek can't have action. Star, oh. Good Star Trek has action, but it also has, again, it has those sort of questions. Should we be doing this? Is this ethical? The morality that comes up with sci-fi, it's not just straight action. And this one's like, should we be... <laughs> <laughs> can you do that effect again? <laughs> should we be... <laughs> There you go. That's exactly <laughs> what a motorcycle does. Uh, and basically, in the tra- <laughs> in the trailer, <laughs> I'm out. in the trailer, they give away that it's basically a huge away mission. They're on a planet out there <laughs> at the far reaches. <laughs> And the, the Enterprise gets destroyed, like, in the first 20 minutes. Does the Enterprise have to get destroyed in every Star Trek movie? Yeah. That's what I'm going to ask. That's how they built the motorcycle. Are they on, like, they model parts together? <laughs> with broken up hole pieces? They got some glue. <laughs> <laughs> so, this, the, the Enterprise got destroyed in what two or three of the Next Generation movies? It got destroyed in what two of the original movies? It got destroyed, and now it's got destroyed in all three of the new ones in some large capacity. It got destroyed, or yeah, it got destroyed in the first one, yes. the new ones. It's get destroyed here, and the second one it got fucked up too. You know, it's like you can do Star Trek without this Enterprise getting fucked up <laughs> all the time. Maybe you need a new starship if it's always getting fucked up. Maybe this shouldn't be the flagship always getting its ass kicked. Yeah, yeah, this know, is supposed right. to be the flagship of the entire federation of, an, of planets, and it's getting it's fucked up all the time. It's an escape pod. <laughs> but you know what? It's got that off-road motorcycle. <laughs> sure does. I'm glad they packed that on board. Ian, Super Mario Bros. 2 was a horrible game. Yes, yeah, so that was Zelda 2. Uh, Ninja Turtles, terrible. No, Awful. not really. We're talking about revisionist game history on this Best of the CU podcast. Uh, loaded question. How much does video game history suffer from revisionism? I.e. E.T. Worst Game Ever, Super Mario Brothers 2, Illegitimate, etc. How much? A fuck ton of it. Okay. Pat and I have mentioned this in passing before, but um, I mean, just to go with the ones that you mentioned right, right now, E.T. is not the worst game ever. E.T. has a lot of problems. E.T. is not even a particularly good game, but it has a lot of good ideas. Um, Super Mario Brothers 2, at the time, no, no one gave a fuck. It was a, either they didn't know or they didn't care. Actually, no, Nintendo Power actually yeah. mentioned it. That yeah. was Doki Doki Panic, and no one gave a shit. Right. No, it, but, but here's the thing. At that point in time, no one was used to, to sequels to these games. Yeah. These, they weren't blockbusters, so no one was necessarily expecting more of the same. It was no. just it was just something different. Um, the one that I always bring up, because I know it's hard, but it so totally gets unfairly shit on, 
and it's one of my favorite games, is Zelda 2. Um, Zelda 2 is a fantastic game and is dumped on constantly by modern gamers. But it wasn't when it came out. That's but it wasn't when it came out. It was out. excellent. Yeah, and it's only dumped on because it doesn't kind it doesn't fit the, the, the mold of other Zelda games. So a lot of this, a lot, a lot of, I think, modern opinion on older games, well, like the ones you had mentioned, is definitely... Um, I, th I think I think this comes from younger younger yes. people, so they think that well I'm, I grew up with say they grew up with the the sixty four Zelda games and on so that's their idea of a Zelda game. They go back to Zelda two. Oh, this isn't what I'm used to, or so the same with the Super Mario Brothers game. Super Mario Brothers two the 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 quote unquote real version is a piece of garbage. Oh, I like play I, it. I like it, but I don't I mean... like it because because all they did was add like a few new elements to it. Pasted the rest on and made it really fucking hard, and that was your Super Mario Brothers too. I mean, I like that, but I don't necessarily like it more than what we got as Super Mario Brothers. Oh, it's not even close. We'll, 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 we'll add wind to it. We'll add a dumb mushroom, which makes no sense. Howard Phillips, explain this to me in person, because I, I asked him about it. And I was like, "All right, Howard, what was the deal with this? Why did Super Mario Brothers two? Why didn't the Japanese come out?" And he said, "They sent us the game uh, to North America. We played it and." I was like, all right, first of all, it's really hard. But second of all, you just change all the gameplay balance from the first one, which made it a good experience, right? You can run through quickly yeah. and you get the mushrooms. You can't run Super Mario Bros. You cannot run through the Super Mario Bros. 2 Japanese version quickly at all. You get destroyed. So they basically changed what made the first one good. And he said, Cue because someone putting a speed run into the comment section yeah, right now. Exactly. But yeah. <laughs> but, but do that, the, but do that, you know, the, the first hundred times you even play it and it's not going to happen. Yeah. You know. Uh, so they basically, it, it changed the foundation of the gameplay of the first one. And I agree. Why put in power-ups that, that harm you? It doesn't make any sense. You know, is there any games that really have done that to that extent? Especially after the first one, we were used to that. You know, and so, no, I'm glad we got the Doki Doki Panic version. I think it's a wonderful game. Again, I think there's an echo chamber uh, with, with commenting on the internet, and you, you seek out you seek out people with similar comments. So if it gets to the point where, you know, oh, it's the worst game ever, uh, Zelda 2, is, you know, it, it's not a real Zelda game. So you find where the people have the same opinion, and then it just grows from there. Right. So then when you start, when new people research Zelda 2, they'll come up with, why is Zelda 2, someone blogs, why is Zelda 2 is not a real Zelda game? Why E.T. is the worst game ever? You know, and that's where it comes from. Yeah. Because when these games came out, when, when I, I played 2600 games uh, at my friend Billy's house, he, and if we, if, I mean, I, we, we must have popped E.T. in, and we never said, oh, this is the worst game ever. Compared to the other, other 2600 games, it's on the same, it, it's almost, you know, it's almost on the same sort of platform as the other 2600 games. It's not, you I, know what I mean? There's a lot of bad 2600 games out there. Oh, yeah, you know? tons that are worse than that. I had a guy in the store the other day who just incessantly argued with me that E.T., and he kept saying this, E.T. was officially the worst video game ever made. Oh, was it voted on? Yeah, and I and, and after he said that, like, for the fifth time, I'm like, it's really it? not that bad. I said, I've played it, it's not great. I said, but it's got some good ideas. And uh, he kept saying, like, it's officially the worst game. And I said, how is it officially the worst game? He's like, I read it on the internet. Oh, and wow. I, at that point, I was just done. Well, that's, well, well, that's a bad thing with, well, the, using the internet for general knowledge at all, I think I spoke about this with it could have been Frank a couple weeks ago that our generation, at least mine, are, are the last to do research without using the internet. Sure. Actually, get out books, look up magazine articles, maybe use a computer to look up journal entries, but actually go to the stacks, look up journals, look up magazines, and get that and use that for source of information. Well, not you can just use internet. a computer to do old school research without having to go into the stacks. But, but yeah, I'm talking. Yeah. People use the internet as a consolidated Wikipedia page of knowledge, and that's my knowledge. Versus right. going and getting those individual sources and reading through themselves yes. and making their own decision. So there's something to be said for that. I'm not saying for video games you can always do that, but it's the mindset of here's the easy s summation of the you know Le Legend of Zelda 2, Adventure of Link, and what people think about it, versus thinking for themselves and doing their own research or even playing through the game themselves. Yeah. Our pal James got a lot of crap for saying he didn't want to review the new Ghostbusters film in 2016. Ian and I responded on the best of the CU podcast. Uh, James Rolfe, the Angry Video Game Nerd, came out with a video um, about a week ago. May 16th, recording from the 24th. Okay. Um, simply stated, uh, uh, you know, uh, Ghostbusters review, I won't. 
And in it, he goes through his reasons as to why he uh, has no interest in seeing the new Ghostbusters reboot. Um, he details all of his reasons in what I would consider an articulate manner. Um, I'm going to throw this out there very quickly. Uh, never uh, at any point is it stated that the fact that the cast is all female is uh, one of the reasons that he doesn't want to see it. Um, and he was destroyed uh, by all sorts of people and all sorts of media as um, being closed-minded, I think, uh, both sides, uh, both, you know, the, 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 the for and the, the against the PC and the feminism and things like that, uh, tried to use James, uh, to further their own agenda using this video. Um, and what it comes down to for me is, uh, A, that's horseshit. I think he had a giant target on him, uh, based on the fact that he is a, a big pop culture figure uh what people like to refer to as a gatekeeper and you have a pop culture gatekeeper coming out and saying firmly with his foot down uh in a way that i think some people may have misinterpreted uh saying that he doesn't have any interest in it and i i, I have no choice but to defend this guy i really don't see what the the problem here is and the reason is, is i i see quite a bit of myself in 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 the way he discusses this. Um, while I don't necessarily agree with all of his points for not wanting to see this movie, I don't believe that we need a passing of a torch. Uh, I don't necessarily believe that the CG from the original Ghostbusters holds up as well uh, as he may think, although I love well, practical, practical effects. I, I love practical Some effects. Some do. Like, no, they do. holds up. Sure, he does. And I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm just, I'm saying, I love practical effects, but that's not going to appeal to everyone. Sure. Okay. Um, but his points and his thoughts are his own points and his own thoughts. Um, this reminds me of when I refused to, to, to play DuckTales Remastered. James is looking at something and James is going, no way am I going to enjoy this. And these are the reasons. One thing that James brings up that I love because I'm such a stickler for this sort of thing is naming conventions. And the fact that they're just calling this Ghostbusters. Call this Ghostbusters the new generation. Or call this Ghostbusters, I mean, whatever. Call this, I mean, don't, don't steal the fucking name of the original movie when it has no connection. I think he makes a very good point that... If you're going to have cameos from the original characters in it, but they're not play from the original movie in it, but they're not going to be cameoing their original characters, characters uh, it, it, it's it's pointless and it's stupid. So, at the end of the day, timing-wise, his video may not have been the best. But how is this any different than anyone else taking life experience, what they know they like? what they know they've seen, and let's remind people one more fucking time that a trailer's job is to de is to help you determine whether you are or are not going to see a movie. And James saw enough, and James said, no, I don't want to see it. There was nothing bratty about this. There, 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 there was nothing sexist about this. There was nothing even subtly sexist about this. This is a guy who likes a movie maybe too much, like I like fucking DuckTales too much or other movies too much myself, and has decided that he's not going to see it. All right, before we, I give my part, yes, I am friends with James. Ian uh, is his Max and Irma's partner. That's a restaurant. So we, we know James. We like James. James is a good person. Uh, he's treating me well. I respect him. He respects me. He bought me a beer when I looked really uncomfortable at MAGFest and talked to me. And honestly, to this day, he may not remember that, but that meant a shitload to me. I mean, that's neither here nor there, but he's I, a good fucking dude. I don't remember that. Regardless of that, I would say what I'm going to say regardless whether or not of how well I know James. So people forget that there's reasons why he did this video uh, or they don't care because, again, people had an agenda tagging him, which we'll get into. James put out this video for a few reasons. He put out this video... Because he's a big fucking Ghostbusters fan. Right. He's huge. He did a video where he went around New York and videotaped, videotaped, they don't use tape anymore, but went around and went to all the spots that they filmed like parts of the film. Like he found the firehouse, he found Tower on the Green where they filmed the scene from the first movie, uh, things like that. He, he tried to find locations. He loves this film. The same way probably that I love Back to the Future. It's the closest thing I could say. Like if they made, remade Back to the Future, 
I'd feel probably the same way he feels about Ghostbusters. I don't have the connection to Ghostbusters that other people have. Right. Neither do I. I think it's a good movie. I think the sequel is average at best. That's where I disagree with James, where James thinks the sequel is good. He said I went back and watched it and it was good. I don't think the sequel is good. And I think I'm more objective than that because I don't have this nostalgic feeling for Ghostbusters. I didn't see the original Ghostbusters probably until when I was my early 20s. I never saw it as a kid. All I saw it in my late teens. I, I was not, yeah, I was I not never, one of those. I don't remember ever being on TV as a kid. That's why. I remember Back to the Future being on TV sure. and Goonies or whatever. Don't remember Ghostbusters being on TV. My main Ghostbusters uh, experience was, was the excellent real Ghostbusters cartoon. That yeah. was my main experience for the most part. So he put the video out for that reason. He didn't want to deal with people asking him to review the movie when it came out. That's the second reason. The third reason was he put out a, a, a very good video recently detailing this was a setup for the history of Ghostbusters 3. He put out a video detailing I the guess. long and tumultuous process of the, the actor saying it's going to get made next year. Bill Murray saying, I'm never going to do it. Now I am going to do it. Bill Murray's going to be a ghost in the movie. Back and forth. This movie's been in pre-production or, or production or for like 15 years. Back to like 2000, they were going to do a Ghostbusters 3. Then finally, they did the video game, which basically counted as Ghostbusters 3, because all the characters came back to do the voices. So that was the other reason why. So I was in Norway the last night when I saw Ghostbusters trending, trending on Twitter. Number one. And I was thinking, wow, the, the new trailer must have came out. But it didn't come out. What came out was James posting a video saying, I refuse to do a review on it. And we've covered Ghostbusters, uh, the movie, on the on the podcast before. And our arguments was always was that don't, don't care, don't judge it because it's a female cast. Judge it because of the writing and the quality of what you see, which we've done. And the first trailer came out, and honestly, I wasn't impressed. No. It I pretty much met my expectations of what I thought it was going to be. It was humor based upon... Uh, going for one-liners and humor based upon trying to one-up each other uh, to be funny, sort of SNL writing versus being funny because of the situation. Correct. A lot of the humor of the original Ghostbusters was these characters, especially Bill Murray's deadpan, what the fuck are these ghosts, getting into these weird situations that he was deadpanning through, mm -hmm. like getting slimed and trying to deal with the techno babble of Dan Aykroyd and Harold Ramis. And Bill Murray was sort of your conduit to that, this is ridiculous, but this is how I would react to it. That was what the humor came from. It was serious situations with these weird characters thrown into it. And from that trailer, it just looks like these over-the-top funny characters that that's not how the original, that's not the tone of the originals were. The, the, the originals could have been horror movies with different characters playing those parts. And if it was written slightly differently, that you could have said that could have been a horror movie. That's what was so, at least about the first one, that I think was so unique about that movie. And it, why, it wrote a very fine yes. line, but definitely in the end was comedy. Yes, but it was lightning in a bottle. And the sequel was just sequelitis to me, and it was just, okay, we'll get, the, we'll get the characters back for this rehash story, and, you know, it doesn't have the magic of the original. So, what happened was, unfortunately, and it started with Patton Oswalt, now, there's a backstory to Patton Oswalt's wife died a few weeks ago. And supposedly, in some capacity, she's involved with the with this film. I don't know if she has a cameo or if she helped write it. I don't know. It's, it's, sad, it's sad that someone's wife dies tragically. But Patton Oswalt really is what set this off when he tweeted uh, kind of a nasty sort of attack on James, a, a non-sequitur. Sequitur. And from that, it got picked up from Samantha B and from other uh, people I saw tweet. I was like, holy shit. And, and all of a sudden, you have people writing articles about how James is a sexist uh, and how, you know, uh, he, he, he's, he represents all the misogynists and all the nerd culture. Now, obviously, they see James, they see a guy with glasses, and he does a character called Angry Video Game Nerd, but that's a character. Yeah. He's acting yeah. in that. That's really not how James is. James is soft-spoken. Incredibly soft-spoken. But he's very nice, and I would not call him a nerd by any means. He's got a fucking no. heavy metal tattoo on his goddamn arm. He loves heavy metal. You know, like, he's not what you would call a nerd. But to these people, like you said, they see him, and to him, he's a gatekeeper. He's a he's the biggest, uh, quote-unquote, celebrity so far who said, I'm not going to see this movie. Again, didn't state because it was women. It was because, he, we, for reasons we stated, it just didn't look interesting to him, and he loves the franchise. And so people go after him. So... What I'm going to say is this, and this goes this goes into a larger discussion about if you want to have diversity, more diversity in film, more female leads in action movies, that's fine. Um, 
if you want to attack people that don't agree with that, which I think is silly, which we'll get into why in a second, because there's been there's been a decent amount, not a lot, but a decent amount of movies with female action leads that done well in the past 15 years, which we'll get into. Some not so much. Go after the people that actually you should go after. And don't cherry pick someone to sort of push and move your agenda along, thinking that here's the biggest target, let's go after him. Patton Oswald even said that I picked the wrong target. Didn't apologize, which he probably should have, but said I picked the wrong target. Yeah, because well, it's not James. It, 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 it's it's unfortunately now you have you have both sides. You have the the ultra hardcore feminists who are attacking James and saying that it's sexist, but you also have the complete opposite side that is trying to use them as as a banner. But he's not the one. I mean, he's so he's so far out of the loop on this shit that he shouldn't have ever been brought up in in, in these terms. Sure. And then you have to deal with articles like uh, Devin Faraci wrote an article, and he's on one of these fucking film sites. I don't want to promote. Uh, but he his article this makes me sick to my stomach, uh, entitled "The Soft Sexism of Hating on the of, on the New Ghostbusters." You don't have to be sexist to, let, to to dislike the movie, but it helps and basically just rips into James in this article as the 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 model of here's a guy who's who's not really he doesn't think he's a sexist but really is the quote unquote soft sexism. Um, this is what I'm going to say to that, uh, uh, Mr. Faraci, you make me sick. If I ever meet you, I'll say that to your face. Um, if you want to go after someone who says, I don't want to see this movie because it's women, and it looks like there's abject sexism, that's fine. Uh, but when you get into this whole weird realm of I'm going to say what you really are, even though you didn't say it, or I know what you're thinking even though you may or not be thinking of it, that's fucking scary. Yeah, And that's where we're at, though, unfortunately. Where it's this really weird Orwellian reality where you not only have to watch what you say, you have to watch what might people might perceive you to be thinking, even though you're not saying it. And that's fu that fucking scares me. And it's unfortunate someone like James got caught up in that mindset where he became a, a lightning rod. Uh, you said both sides. I, well, I'm sure people defended him, but people smeared him online. People fucking straight out smeared him and straight out fucking libeled him online. Oh, no, there's plenty of people who defended him, too, but I'm just saying most of it was smearing. Um, yeah. The people who defended him, unfortunately, were not, uh, A, the right type of people who would do would, whose defense would be any good, or, sure. or they weren't big enough. Um, what, what bothers me so much about that article is this complete disconnect and inability to realize that th so much shit has been whipped up over this movie because of female leads on both sides, people going at it, that it's been completely forgotten that someone might just really care about a movie franchise and not like the direction it went in. Sure. My biggest my biggest pet peeve originally was that it wasn't a sequel. And I, and I figured if you're going to do this properly, and this is one of the things that James says, if you're going to do this properly, you have to at least connect it. You have to give the original fans a reason to go see it. So put cameos in, or at least have it in the same universe. Sure. To pass the torch. At least do that. I don't I don't know that there needs to be a whole origin story to the new team, but put it in the same universe. Same universe. Yes. Acknowledge it. Because now, when you see that they're in a firehouse again, they have the same hearse, they have almost the same outfits, they have the same dynamic of the four characters. When you, when you do reboots... Usually when you do reboots, it has to happen... You, traditionally, reboots happen when it's been so far in the past that the generation before doesn't know about it or care about it. Or the previous movies were fucked up so badly that you have to redo it. Right. For example, the new Spider-Man is going to come out because the last one's underperformed and Marvel wants to do it. With Ghostbusters, there was no reason to reboot it. No. You either do a, a soft sequel or you just keep it in the same universe and that's what people... That's what everyone wanted. This isn't what people wanted. That's why people are upset about this first and foremost, in my opinion. The, 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 the female characters is secondary to the fact that this is not what people wanted for their franchise. That's just the bottom line. So what you come down to is when you, when you, when you throw someone... The people that attack James were the worst enemy in this case because they're attacking someone that probably they agree with them well this isn't my ghostbusters i'm not i don't want to see this you're attacking someone who represents their views and now you're seeing him being smeared unnecessarily 
You're gonna see the movie. You know, what I mean, not only if you're on the if you were on like me who was on the fence, you're not gonna see it now. You're not gonna give a shit about it now, and now you're gonna revel in its failure because bef- because people on the fence like me see something like this that before you thought the movie was gonna fail or now, but now you're gonna enjoy it because these people are gonna be taken down a peg after this. Well, so they're their own worst fucking enemy and getting and getting this being a success, which is unfortunate because you can do good action comedies. I know it's possible with female leads, but after this fails, it's going to be far less likely for, likely for them to be greenlit in the future. So they worked against their own their own goals here. Right. But it was it was a bridge too far. Well, and the other thing was, I, I did see people picking fights with James on this, who uh, fully admitted that the movie looked like crap and they had no interest in seeing it. So, what are you disagreeing with him for? This is going to come out underperform. Uh, you're not going to hear of a sequel. Uh, you'll you'll probably think of it. They'll probably reboot it or do a male cast or something in five years, and you'll see it. You'll see it come out then. Who the fuck knows what's going to happen at that point? Or they'll just can it entirely. That's what's going to happen, uh, because. It's just a weird situation. It's really weird. I feel bad for James uh, about it, but honestly, he probably doesn't give a shit that much, and nor should he. No, he probably doesn't. Because it's just the uh, the absolute last guy that I wanted to see something like that happen to. And it's funny because uh, they they totally piggybacked off it because the next day after this video came out, they released the second trailer, which yeah. was an improvement, but it still doesn't mean it's going to be a good movie. I you know, seen because it. the word on the street is, and it's not even that. It's not even really alleged or really rumor is that uh, there was strife on the set of this movie mm-hmm. that the stars uh, had these this weird sort of well I need to get just as many funny lines as you did and which is never what you want to hear for a comedy. So nothing organic because, about this because whatsoever. comedy is all about chemistry and being organic and having a. Uh, straight men for some jokes versus others and when you fight for number of jokes it does become a bad SNL sketch at that point so you hear you hear those rumors which it sounds like even the director I hear it's not even here I mean it happened he, he, he lashed out on people on tw- at Twitter at some point um, and then Melissa McCarthy behind the scenes reportedly was very upset about how the movie went and she was supposedly was a very big uh, big fan of the cartoon series and really wanted it to be a success and supposedly is, was not happy about how the movie w- went along. So when you have the stars not happy about it, it doesn't bode well, unfortunately. Um, so we're going to see what happens here. But again, I didn't touch on it. I just want to say this real quick about about people being against female action stars. There's been very successful uh, movies with female action stars the past 15 years. You, you're up to the fucking 6th or 7th Resident Evil movie coming out, for God's sake, with a female lead. Angelina Jolie was probably, arguably, the the top three biggest action stars for like a six, seven year span in the early 2000s. Tons of action movies. Some of them I thought weren't that good. I thought Salt was terrible. Bad, bad plot. But you know what? She was a variable action star. So I don't think men are against female action stars. It just has to be the right story. And for this, this is sort of the the weirdest situation you could have gotten I think to, to make it a, a all female cast over a pre-existing property that people were already touchy about and waiting for a sequel to come out for the last 15 years and being and having their, their uh, hopes dashed entirely by not having the original cast back so so for a situation like this I don't think you could have picked a worse project uh, to, to try to do this with that's just my opinion and that I think feeds into it okay so this is probably the most requested one. Everyone loves to relive my pain through the story I told of going to a customer's birthday party. It's the stalk- Stalker Story Part 1 on the Best of the CU Podcast. The Aww. bigger the bigger problem was... Uh, I'm just going to say it. I'm going to get stabbed in the throat, but I have evidence. I have notes. I have, I have told the story so many times. There's this guy named Max who came into the store. Do you hear that, Max? You're probably listening, because I don't think you've forgotten about me, and I'm tensing up just thinking about it. He owned a pig once. He owned a pig. Big pig. Big. Big. Um, later on, though. Uh, Max used to come into the store and drop a lot of money. And he used to uh, stay there for like six, seven, eight hours at a time. He had a guy named Clay. Clay would take him to the store, and Clay would sit in the Jeep and stare out the front window. He wouldn't read, he wouldn't do crossword puzzles, he wouldn't play games, he would stare out the front window for seven to eight hours while Max just shopped and talked. And eventually, Max asked me about, uh, Max asked me if I wanted to go to his birthday party. 
I was like, uh, I'm bad at saying no to things. I'm like, uh, I mean, when is your birthday? And he's like, well, uh, this day. And I'm like, yeah, I have off. And he's like, okay, so you want to come to the birthday? And I said, sure, I'll go to your birthday for a couple hours. I was the only person at the birthday party. <laughs> in a house where his, I, 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 guys, I'm not, guys, this is just a taster. You'll get the full story later. There was a cyclops on the front door. His mom. <laughs> His mom owned a, owned a boarding house. There was a cyclops on the front door, and you could push the cyclops high out, and you could see out the front door to see who was coming in. There was spray painted poetry going up the staircase walls that his mom had spray painted there, and then Max's old room was uh, painted orange from top to bottom, and uh, it just said "fuck you, mom" on the ceiling. Uh, I we walked past the rooms. We. we we walked past the rooms of a couple of the people who lived there. Everyone in the house laid in the fetal position on their side, staring out the window. The fetal position was the only position in this boarding house. He wrote a comic about me. He made a video game about me. Um, I, I, we'll talk more about all of this later at a later time. Is this the tease? This is just the tease. Uh, I don't feel good. My ass is puckering. It is so tight. I could I could break steel right now. So that's that. <laughs> I want to see this comic. So there you go, like... Caitlin. That's uh, that's <laughs> part of it. That's part of it. That's part of that story. <sighs> and the, the funny thing is, Ian made you think Ian gave away all spoilers. Oh no, there's a lot more to that. <laughs> there's a lot more than that. <laughs> I haven't told you nearly everything. Oh, it's gonna be awkward between you and Max. Uh, your fiance is in the chat room. And she's asking a special, a special question. Uh, ask Ian about ranch dressing in the bathroom, no! man. I guess in a player. No, <laughs> no I don't Ran want to. Ranch don't dressing in the bathroom, man. Funny, why? I don't want to talk about the ranch dressing. Not right now. We can do that later. Talk about the ranch dressing in the bathroom at another time. Another time. Another goddamn time. When the full story. He had ranch dressing in his bathroom. He had ranch dressing in his bathroom. I went to go take a piss. And I got up. <laughs> Walked away. I wasn't sitting on that toilet seat. Why would I? I was pissed anyway. And I went and I washed my hands. And I went to go reach for soap. And what did I find in my hands? But not soap. Not soap. Not soap. A razor blade and a full unopened packet. A full unopened packet. Oh, a full and open package of Jack in the Box house buttermilk sauce. Unopened. Just completely, just completely untouched. So I walk, I walk back into the bedroom. I walk back into the bedroom. And at this point, my mind is fucking frayed. It's shot. It's, it's, it's going out the window. And I looked at Max and very deadpan. I said, so Max, do you shave with ranch dressing? Ugh. And he said... He got all upset, and he goes, what? What, what? what do you mean? <laughs> I said, well, on the side of your sink in the bathroom, there's a razor resting atop a package of ranch dressing. <laughs> and he goes, oh, no, 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 I don't do that. I, I saw that. I don't know why it was there. <laughs> Throw it away! <laughs> <laughs> We're talking like a safety razor, right? Like a big razor? Yeah, a big razor. <laughs> Just making sure it wasn't a switchblade. No. Uh that's the full story, and so glad you got it out right now. That's not the full story. That's a that's a teaser. Well, that was the ranch. That was the full ranch part. Oh, yeah, there's yeah. No, okay. Yeah, we'll do this every week, I think. You we still have... haven't gotten through the comic or the video game. Well, this is going to be a multi-part special. This is like the Lord of the Rings release dates. This is like <laughs> once a year, <laughs> every December. We're gonna have a great installment. Kanye West once said that he was going to name an album Turbo Graphics, a system that is far cooler than he is. Let's talk about it, or hear us talk about it on this next uh, entry in Best of the Sea podcast. You know what's funny? When you see Turbo Graphics 16 trending on Twitter, and you have to like scratch your eyes and wondering what the hell is going on with that, and then you realize. It's because Kanye West nonchalantly tweets out that TurboGrafx-16 is going to be the title of his next album coming out in the summer. And, and, I, and everyone loses their fucking minds, especially anyone associated with video games at all. Yeah, I was going to say, I don't know if everyone lost their mind, but well, his our, fans lost our, their minds. our community certainly did. Um, it's interesting. The guy's a fucking asshole. I mean, fuck him. I really don't like Kanye Fish West. Uh, I just don't. Um, 
great producer, big asshole. Oh, he's a great artist. Um, I'm not going to de- deny him that. But it, it does kind of humanize someone because his tweets were like giddy. Yeah, it was like I'm thinking about when I was a kid. Yeah, it was you like know, he, back it, in 1990. It was like you he know? just sat down and he's like, what the fuck, man? Fuck it. I miss playing video games. Yeah. I love blazing lasers, you know? So it was just, it, it's its weird to see a celebrity on that level, especially someone like Kanye, who holds himself in such high regard that you would never expect him to just fucking start talking about video games. He said nerd vibes and is like, he's remember himself being a geeky kid. Yeah. That, you have to be a geek if you have the Terminal Graphics 16. Right. It's not like a random thing you get. You have to like go. You have to you say have to specifically ask. You for have that. to say, you know what? I want that one console that no one else in my town has. <laughs> I always say, literally, it was me who had a Turbo Graphics 16, and the kid literally crossed town in the biggest, literally the biggest house in the town I lived in, whose family won the lottery, yeah. and we were the only ones who had a Turbo Graphics 16 that I knew of. And, and I got mine because I won it in a newspaper contest. Yep. Which I've told you this story before. It's an insane story, but it's true. It's a good one though. Um, so he he sent out a few tweets. So he would have been, he was born in 77, so he would have been 12 when it came out, 13 when it got more popular. It was popular for like a year and a half. Um, you know, so perfect age for it. But then, but then he mentions, he, he mentions blazing lasers, enjoying playing blazing lasers. And that to me is not like, he's not just like, first of all, you can't, you can't try to be a poser for geek culture and bring up Turbo Graphics 16, that's like that's like digging a hole out in the backyard somewhere and finding gold. You know what I mean? Like, that's not something even video game fans know about, especially people modern. Like, what the fuck's a Turbo Graphics 16? Right. It's it's. Yeah. I mean, there are people who come into the store and they look at a Turbo Graphics and they go, "What's that?" And I I tell them about it. It's yeah. It's not something that's just known about. Most people know about a Sega Genesis. If he if he said that he. The reaction would not have been as big if he was like, my next album's going to be called Sega Genesis. Yeah, people are like, oh, okay, that's that's cool still, but it's not like, that's not, he's not one of us then. That's not a He's one point. of us. He's my pal. What? Ugh. I don't know that you want him to be your pal, but, but then he that's tweets, a deep cut. But then he twists, tweets, he remembers playing, with his friend playing Neo Geo. Yeah. And then so, Spy Hunter at his mom's. So it's uh, not, I mean, he was playing, at the, even at the time, esoteric consoles. So, obviously, his friend has money if he had a Neo Geo console. We're talking, what was that? Like, $600, $500? I think it was 6 In 1991? What was that? I think it was 6 So, that's a ton of money back then. It's like it's $1,000 now. Yeah. And his friend just nonchalantly had a Neo Geo. Um, so, I don't know. I, 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 I don't know if I ever think I'd be able to like Kanye West in any way, shape, or form, especially after he blew up on the Saturday Night Live a couple of weeks ago saying he was, you know, better than Kubrick and more important than all these, and better than Picasso and more important. You know, he's full of himself, obviously. Uh, but but he is talented. But you know what? He likes Turgraph sixteen for that one moment. For that one moment, you're like, what? Well, you know what? He's a he's a dude. You're just a person. He's a fucking dude <laughs> now. He's like, if he came over and saw the games, he'd be like, fuck yeah. He'd know them. He would he would know some of them. Now I want to know exactly every single game he had. Now <laughs> he's like, yeah, I was rocking those TTI late system titles. Yeah, I had Hero Toma. <laughs> You're like, holy shit! <laughs> it's just weird because you can't. I'm trying to think of an equivalent of that happening with video games or anything else where you'd geek out that much. You know, like it would be like if 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 Tom Hanks said, "Oh yeah, I remember reading Maximum Carnage." You know, back in the day, and loving it. It'd be like, "What the hell?" Sure. You know, it it, it 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 connects you to something that you love that closely, and it's from a big douchebag at the same time. So it it was this weird feeling when you saw it. You're probably like, what? And it wasn't even you know, it didn't have the dash in between the sixteen and everything. It wasn't exactly spelled you know with the same. But it, it's it was there. Turbocraft sixteen, the first and last time we may ever see it, except when the album comes out. You, if, if he, he keeps, he keeps that title, because he he changes the titles of his albums. All Someone the time. tweeted a great picture. It was. Uh, uh, what was it? Kanye Courage and Alpha Zone and put his face on the Keith Courage. It was hysterical. <laughs> it was hysterical. Anything else? It was just. It was the feel good moment about a uh, about a week ago. Yeah, I believe a week and a half ago. It was fun. One thing from my youth will never ever stop haunting me, and it was talking my brother into getting Home Alone Two on the Nintendo for Christmas one year as a gift. We talk about this and other Christmas gift memories next on this best of the CU podcast. We're going to talk uh, Christmas. Christmas time <laughs> is here. Is You're here. murdering it. You want, you want to try? No. <laughs> That's why I'm not. All right, I'm just going to tweet this out about our new 
topic. So, I guess in general, just Christmas, this is our last podcast before the holiday, which is in a week from today, Christmas. Not the holiday, but one of them during our season. Um, what, what are your, some of your standout, I guess, Christmas memories? They don't have to be gaming related, but of course, with us, it'll probably be intertwined with video games. But, you know, what's some of give me Give me one or two of your of your ones that like are memorable for either being really bad or good Christmas-wise. I don't actually remember a whole lot of bad Christmases. I always really oh, enjoyed I it. Them. <laughs> I don't. Um, and video games related to Christmas, yeah. I, I mean, I, I definitely remember, you know, getting my my, my first uh, my NES, um, which was amusing because I think at that point in time, I think my parents were buying it because uh, they they knew they would have fun with it too. Here's ah! something. Here's something that I would you know I would have a blast with and enjoy. Oh, oh, but you know, we 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 were. I, there was not a lot of money in my family growing up, and I don't remember that Christmas there being a ton of packages under the tree, but I do remember getting the NES, and I remember my parents playing and enjoying it. So, I, you know, it was definitely bought as a family thing. Um, I also remember the first time we were playing Super Mario Brothers. Okay. And I'd never seen it before. I mean, this was this was 80, Christmas 86, 87, you know? So I got mine on Christmas 87. I think 87. But I hadn't seen it, you know, because, I mean... The knowledge of the stuff wasn't around, and I was one of the, you know, they they weren't widespread on my block yet. Um, yeah, eighty seven to me is always the, the point of difference for the NES. Yeah, eighty seven is when I got it. NES is when everyone Christmas eighty seven is when a lot of kids started getting it. Yeah, or eighty seven so, in general. Yeah, I remember we were looking, we're, you know, we're playing, and I mean, I'm a kid, you know, my parents are teaching me things as I grow up, you know. D- there's a toadstool growing in that ground. Don't don't eat that toadstool. I'm like, all right, fine, I won't eat these poison mushrooms. It's a, it's a good call, mom and dad. Um, so I remember. My parents booting up Mario, and they're trying to show me how to use it, and, and they're running along, and I hit the block, and I remember the mushroom popping out. I remember I freaked the fuck out, and I was like, don't touch the mushroom, it will kill you. And I remember my parents... Now, where did that come from, that thought? The, the fact that my parents had taught me that mushrooms were poisonous. That's what <laughs> I was getting at. So so my parents had taught me that mushrooms are poisonous. Uh-huh. So I see this toadstool, I freak out, and... I remember freaking out to the point where my, my, my dad jumped over the mushroom and he looked at me and he goes, are you sure? I go, yes. So for the first day, my parents played without trying to touch the mushrooms at all. So even when you were four, you were that anxiety ridden that you had a... That's five. <laughs> Whatever. But yes. <laughs> yes. So you, you want to see what would happen I, I don't, if I you mean, touched I, the mushrooms. So I remember, I, remember, you know, <laughs> I remember the first game I truly loved on that system and you know it doesn't necessarily hold up for me over time but I still like it was Duck Hunt because I could grasp Duck Hunt you know it was pick up the gun and you know point it at the screen and shoot so I remember going to bed and as my parents often did when they discovered things in video games when I was a kid they would wake me up after I'd gone to bed and my dad pulled me out my mom and my dad are sitting there and it's the beginning of World 1-1 they had just reset it and my, my dad's like here I want to show you something and he runs up and he hits the mushroom and the mushroom like goes out and I'm like and my dad touches the mushroom, and he fucking grows huge. And I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. So you, so you didn't read the manual when you I, got the game? No, I mean... I read I, them. I always read my manuals. I mean, I mean, Christmas, when I was a kid, it was a busy day. It was, you know, it was get up and, and, and do the gifts. And then my parents pretended they were Christian for a while. So we went... They to, pretended they were Christian. We went to church for the first few Christmases. They I pretended remember. to honor Jesus They Christ. pretended. They're like, you know, the parents will be into it. So yeah, sure, we're, we're Jesus. It looks, good, it looks good socially. Right, right. I mean, it was the 80s. Religion was a big social thing in the 80s. Was so, it? Yeah. In the 80s? I think it's always been a big social you know, thing. Like, like, okay. Especially in the 80s. You know, people love Jesus. <laughs> they wore they wore the piano ties yeah. to church. <laughs> so, so you know, we went to we went to ch- we went to church, and we went to both my grandparents' house. And you know, I mean, I I probably did not play with the NES or even really interact with it much that day. Okay. So, anyways, that that's one of my number one memories is thinking that the mushrooms were going to kill you, and my dad had to convince me that it was a good thing to get. Okay. I want to stay stay on the I guess the NES Christmas of '87, um, which again was sort of like the year a lot of people found out about it. Nintendo in '86 only had. Um, 30 games for most of the year. Um, they sell mostly only the black box games, and yeah. they had about 10 third party games that came out um, like Ghosts and Goblins 1942, uh, Chubby Cherub, Ninja Kid, Muscle, um, a few others, uh, Athletic World, actually, that was 87, Karate, Karate Champ, 
uh, and a couple others from Data East. Rampage, maybe? No. No. I have them all up there, actually. That one shelf has most of them right there. Um, I'm trying to remember what else I got that year. Commando. Anyway, the whole point was... Oh, and Tag Team Wrestling. The, the City Connection wasn't. Yeah. But the rest of those were. The whole point was, not a lot of people knew about it yet. The The newsletter was just getting started. Fun Club newsletter. The first two, no one had it for the first two. And it was literally just a newsletter before it was a little mini magazine. Yeah. Um, so once you got the 87, though, it started to creep back in to, you know, video games, consoles. People were like, oh, what's this? Check this out. And my friend Kevin had it. I just met him, you know, uh, in school. He just moved there from, I forget, from where he moved. And I went over one day, and he had a TV downstairs in the basement. Remember, they had the wood around the TV where they framed the TV. One yeah. of those ones was probably like a 32-inch. And downstairs <laughs> in the basement, and remember, his parents made steak. With A1 sauce, mashed potatoes, and peas, we ate up. Uh, we, we ate up on the bar, and kung fu was on the TV. We paused it, and that's my first like NES memory. I'll never forget that. And that was probably like September or early October, uh, uh, before Christmas. And so from that point, I had to get an NES. And so I go in the newspaper. That's when you see the advertisements for like, you know, like they were like regional electronic stores. Like Tops was one. In Jersey, it was called Tops, like two P's, you know, stuff like that. They always like always the trading cards, <laughs> almost, or just without. They always had Midnight Madness. They'd always have like these midnight sales, not uh-huh. Black Friday. They had Midnight Madness. Sales. I remember sales. You like remember that, those? Actually, yeah, They'd yeah, have yeah. them on like random Saturdays or yeah. Fridays in like this early December, you know. And so they have like, oh, get a color TV for fifty bucks. It was like, oh my god. And then they'd have like one of them to get you in there and try to sell yeah. you a refrigerator uh-huh. or I remember. so anyway. So they always had to answer that, and I always go, "Hey, yeah, look at this Nintendo, I want it." And so I did that every week. And then, <laughs> you know, I, I, finally, I was very excited, but this was my first home console. I, I played games on the computer on the XT we had since I was five. I played games on that, but this was a video game console. This was like, wow, you know. And just because my friend had it, my friend Kevin had Kung Fu, he had Duck Hunt, he had uh, Top Gun, you know, maybe a couple others uh, he had. I remember. But um, yeah, then I got the uh, the set, the console set, that one, the control deck set with, with Super Mario Brothers, and then my uncle got me, I think my uncle got me Akari Warriors, and then Spy Hunter. Those are the games I started out with. I know I wasn't afraid of the mushroom at first. I and uh, it's one of those, it's one of those things just in general when you're a kid that I don't remember ever believing in, in Santa Claus. I really don't. I figured this might come up. But by the time I was probably five, I don't think I even believed in him just because... I guess I was always inquisitive as a kid, and I always was like, how does it the time to go around the world and go down everyone's chimney? Well, yeah. I said, like, we don't even have a real chimney. How does he get down there? Not I just bl- that. My parents were too lazy to rip the Kmart stickers and Bradley's stickers off the, the G.I. Joe toys I'd get, so it was like, I figured it out. My parents did the best they could to keep that, and the fun thing is, is I actually, because I was thinking about it today, um, just because it's the holidays, but I do actually have one or two clearly formed memories where I thought that it was real. I remember, like, you know, not to sound sappy, but the magic of it, you know? Like, waking up and walking out in the living room and seeing all the toys and being like, wow, yeah, you know, what, what, what happened here? And I, I remember loving that, but, I mean, much like you said, I think I believed in Santa Claus long for, for as long as I did, which wasn't very long because I, I, I wanted to. You know, because it's it's a cool thing to think about when you're a kid. But yeah. I mean, I think any kid who, who can start cognitively reasoning is like, no, no, that just doesn't happen. I mean, I, I, so I, I think I think by the time well, I was six, which would have been like the year after the the year after I got my NES, I don't know, somewhere in that like eighty eight was was probably when I was like, yeah, no, and other kids in my class had started to like figure it out too, and well, you know, I never I never blew it for anyone because it because it, like I said, it was. Fun. The magic was, I was going to say, the magic to me was always still there. Just because, sure. maybe this is getting into too much personal thing, I didn't get many presents or gifts no. from my parents throughout the year. Like, it was rare for my, my dad to come home. It's so rare, I can remember the one or two times where he did come home with like, uh, I even remember what he bought me. One time he came home from either a business trip or something, and he stopped by a toy store, and I was in my, I think I was sleeping, he walked in, and he got me... I don't know why he picked it out, but he got me a He-Man figure, and the He-Man figure he got me was Adam. Yeah, before he transformed into the He-Man. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Which is strange. <laughs> but my dad didn't know it. It's hard. Right, 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 yeah, he sure. got me Adam, which so I always love that figure because of that. He has like the nice velvet. Yes. <laughs> yeah, the best. He got me Adam, and he got me Han Solo uh, Return Jedi trench coat version from Endor, which is still one of my favorite figures. And it's, that's, to me, again, that's one of the things I'll always remember because he didn't do it that often. Um, so I got 
one or two gifts for my birthday and then Christmas. So Christmas was like, okay, I'm getting like 10 presents. You know, so I remember not being able to sleep and then I, you know, 4 a.m. I'd get up and walk out and under the tree there'd be presents. Yeah. No, I mean, and, and then my parents were, were so, were so, <laughs> this is the reason why I never believe in, in Santa. My parents, my parents wrapped the gifts differently for, for purses. So my sister was wrapped in one. And I remember getting the gold wrapping one year. So I was like, I don't think Santa would do that. Right, right, right. You know? Sure. So, so I, I remember like even getting excited because like I see the, I see the, the, the gift in the shape of the Tiger LCD because it was always in the blister pack. Right. So like, oh my god, I got a Tiger LCD. It was, it was probably Ninja God or Double Dragon, you know. I was like, so excited for a Tiger LCD because I never had a Game Boy. So the magic to me was always there because I knew like that. Yes. Yeah. So the, the, yeah, that magic in in that sense, sure. I'm just referring to like the whole the, the, the actual magical aspect of oh, you know the whole, right? Yeah, yeah. He's, he's but, a no, the magic uh, of Christmas was always there too, and it, it's the same sort of deal. You know, like I said, not a lot of money growing up. My I didn't get a lot of gifts throughout the year because not not. Because they're my parents were mean, they were great, but because you know they would scrimp and save, and but they would make sure Christmas was cool. Sure. And uh, you know, just because you mentioned waking up early, you know that's something I always remember doing. But I do remember one Christmas, and this is not really video game related, but for just talking fun stories, I remember waking up like three in the morning, and I had already known Santa was not a thing, but my my younger brother, I I believe, still did. Okay. My parents must have just finished putting like the trees, uh, the, the the toys underneath the tree. I remember waking up. I remember going back out to the the Christmas tree and seeing everything and being like, "Awesome!" And coming back, and my brother was awake because we shared bunk beds. My brother was like, "Did Santa show up?" And I'm like, "Yeah, <laughs> Santa showed up." He's like, "Sweet, can I go look?" And I'm like, "Yeah." So you know, my little brother in like, bloody pajama goes pitter pat out in the living room, sees him, and like, he's like, "Yeah," and comes back and he's all like, <laughs> he's like all excited, like he is amped up, like he just had a pot of coffee, like kids ready to go. He's like, "I want to open presents." So I'm like, "We can't open presents yet." So I remember this being about three in the morning, and smart as I'd like to think as I was as a kid, I remember. Thinking I was pretty clever, I'm like, well, all right, it's three. So my brother and I sat there until like four. I'm like, four o'clock, why not? And I burst in our parents' room. My dad's like, go back to bed. And I'm like, until when? He's like, at least six. And I'm like, wow. okay, so. So you did that, you stayed up there for two so, hours? Yeah, my brother and I stayed up from like four in the morning, and I think we gave my parents until seven. And my brother just sat there in our room, and we played board games with a little reading light on. And we played, uh, Aww. we played Life, and we played, um, uh, what was that one? It was, it was an 80s game with a bounce. Topple? It was like Topple. We played Topple, and I remember after we played one game of Topple, I was like, okay, we can't play any more Topple because it makes too much noise. And then I think we started a game of like Monopoly Junior, and you know by the time we got bored of that, it was time to open gifts. Oh, there, there you go. <laughs> so yeah, that's a good one. We used to. My dad was is, was never good at getting up, so like he'd always be like, the the last few years I lived at home, you know, um, you know, in my twenties, obviously at that point. Yeah. I didn't even care about Christmas at that point. One, this is a, once I got past like I'd say twelve, I didn't care about Christmas sure. that much anymore, just because. I sort of found out my price limit. My parents had, my father had set on, set on me, and never increased it for inflation. So that was always great because now the past like three four years, there's been no inflation really. The past like five years, it's yeah. been pretty stable actually. But from the from like eighty five to ninety five, there was a lot, a lot of, of inflation. inflation. Yes, and the fact that I was getting the same amount, which is about I say the hundred and thirty dollar price range. Yeah. 140. Yeah. <laughs> I was getting less presents I like, every I, year. I like how you have it at 130 or 140. It's not 150. No, no. I count, I mean, <laughs> you, you're not you're not going between 100, 150. No, no. It was, it, was, it was a certain limit. <laughs> it was a certain limit. And then I started to figure out because I was like, yeah. one year I got like two Legos and one Nintendo game. So I was like, okay, that's about <laughs> that range. You know, I was smart enough at nine to know, realize that. I was thinking about this too. You know, uh, the reason why I don't think there were any disappointing oh, Christmases I, for me was because at a young age, I as well figured out the price limit. So I, I don't know if I was actually working prices at like, cause I wasn't not at age six or seven, but I was like, if I ask for a board game, an action figure and an NES game, I will get those three things. If I ask for three NES games and two board right. games and two action figures, well, then I'm not going to get what I really want because they're just going to randomly pick. Specify. Right, so I have to specify. So the, like, no, very early my, on, I learned how to perfect the Christmas My list. parents, to, 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 my, to my dad's credit, he would say, you're not getting all those. you got to pay. Like, oh, yeah. What are they expensive, Dad? You know, 
looks like, all right, you're not getting all those. You got to pick. <laughs> my parents would always be like, Which oh, one you want? You want that one or that one? <laughs> my parents would always be, even when my brother was around and they knew that I didn't believe in Santa, but my brother was around and they'd be like, well, you know the elves can't do all that work. <laughs> you know, like, they yeah. can't solder together all those NES games for you. It's either TNC or Skater Die. It's not both. <laughs> one or the other. Oh, that's funny. Um, then, of course, I really realized that by the time that, like, you know, Zelda 2 came out, that was one of the infamous chip shortages or whatever, where literally ordered it from Sears, one of the nice Sears catalog, ordered it for Christmas, and didn't get it until April. I talked about that to the first yeah. marathon, how by. You, you actually talked about it on the podcast, because someone, yeah, someone asked you to recount the story, and you did. That was an awful Christmas because of that. That was the worst Christmas ever. That was 89. Christmas 89, I believe that was. No, Christmas, no, Christmas 88. 88. Because then the game came officially out, I guess, early 89. But officially, if you look at NES, it's, it'll say like late 88. You could get it at Toys R Us, but it was it was limited for whatever reason. I think because it was the demand. That's what they they said it was a chip shortage. But, but that and Super Mario 2 were so hard to get in late 88. You just couldn't find them. Yeah, I remember I couldn't. I remember because I think I wanted Mario 2, and I remember not, be, not being able to get it. You just couldn't find it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, um, so that was the worst ever because I got three three or four gifts only. And of those two, one I didn't get till April, and I was crying by the time a UPS truck would come by in, in mid February. I was crying. There's the other shit. Tears. So much so that I finally gave up. I was like, you know, I was, I was like, a, like a prisoner of war. I was just like, there's no hope. Despondent. Then, then finally, yeah, for two weeks, and then it finally came. Then I, was, then I was happy. That was that. And then I got zero, zero gravity cliffhangers. Remember the, remember the race cars, the slot cars, when they were still popular? Oh, the, one, the ones that would go up the wall? Really it, it was yeah. the first one going up the wall. It worked like shit. Yeah. My buddy had those. They were awful. They, it, it got stuck. It would get stuck. Or it would just fly the, the, or fly off the track the, and the, stuck. The, 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 the sweet spot on the trigger was like so was, sensitive. Yeah. <laughs> was, was a millimeter. It was know? really like, bad. So that was returned. I don't remember what my dad got me in lieu of that. He may have just give me the cash. You know, so like, go buy some Lay's. Yeah, exactly. So you can see, you can see how, how like this. This is why I have all this shit now. You can see, you don't have to be a, a like psychology doctorate student to see why I have all this stuff. But the, the fact of the matter is that Christmas, I think I ended up getting like two Lego sets, which I loved the castle system. I loved them, but that was like, like it was, it was, it was rough that Christmas. And from that point on, I was sort of like. The castle system was one that I got. It was probably the only Lego set I, I got, ever got. I got the black, the big black evil uh, castle and the smaller gray one. I had I the smaller that. gray one. Yeah. And I remember my brother growing up, my younger brother, was the Lego kid. He was the one who always wanted Legos. Sure. And he always... I, the thing was, is I never never paid any mind to Legos. Never wanted Legos. I love Legos. And then every time my brother got a Lego set, and my, him and my dad would sit there building it all day, I'd be like, this is the coolest thing it was my, cool. the coolest one I think my brother ever got was he got the, the pirate the big pirate ship that had you could go below that the deck that was like mid 90s they started coming out with other I stuff. would say early 90s That's the, that was the first non uh, castle space or city yeah it, it, it yeah, started it, branching it, out a little bit yeah yeah I, it, I don't think it was like I don't think it was mid 90s but it might have been it was early definitely 90s, 90s was, though yeah. but I remember up, up until the early 90s for, for 40 years 30 years it was just castle I love the castle city set and space. when I had it. I thought it, it was started the with city, then they went to space and then castle. But yeah, I, I had the Robin Hood one. I think I got the Robin Hood next year. For for Legos, I only had about six sets. I had a lot of the little ones. I had the catapult. Remember they cost like only four bucks? The little catapult one. I had yeah. that. I, had I the, think I had that catapult. Actually. Yeah, the, the little yeah. yellow things you'd hit. And, like, mm -hmm. and then I had the jousting set. It was one of those like... I had the jousting set too. It was, it was, it was like it that was just, it, it was green. It was green. It was the green base. It had the fence. and had the two horses with the different color metal. I had the king and the, and the queen and the princess. Yeah. I, I, the I did have that. I, I did I, have I, that. I, that was like, what, that was, they probably cost like $12 back in like 80 I got nine ninety. So like that. It's like that big. So like w the uh, Vani and I do like Toys for Tots every year, and every once in a while I'll go to the Toys R Us just for shits and giggles, not because I'm actually looking for anything. Mm -hmm. But I gotta tell you, the thing that I am most tempted to buy that I never actually do are those like twelve fifteen dollar Lego sets. The I'm medium like, size. One. I'm like not man, medium, it, the smaller. Yeah, medium not size. one that would take up like. A, a much space on my table, something that I could snap together and put on my shelf. Just like I like yeah. to buy like the little SD Gundam kits, the ones that take like an hour and a half oh, yeah. to put together, just because it's fun. And I'm like, I never buy them, but I'm. It would be fun to do it. You're I about think. to swap me a Let me know. I'll pick up a Lego set for you. Yeah, just something. I paid up their the Harry Potter Quidditch set once. <laughs> Not in the box though. But <laughs> if I cared about Harry Potter, that I, I, and, and I think it's it's probably fans don't kill me. It's probably fine. I like Harry Potter. I just, I'm, I'm, I'm sure it's fine. I've just never read it. I've just never read I, it. I, read I, all, I saw the movies. And I, I, I haven't seen the movies. The last few movies were really good. Five was my favorite, I think. And I, 
I don't think I'll ever get time for the books, but uh, it does seem interesting, and Quidditch actually does seem like the most interesting thing. It seems like an interesting sport. I was actually bummed when I... <laughs> you said it seemed like an interesting sport, like, sport. like for real. Uh, when they made <laughs> the video game, and the video game got horrible reviews, as expected, I was kind of upset, because I'm like, that. I would actually take that home and play that, like, if it actually worked out well. That looks amusing. You're a closet Harry Potter fan, Ian. I've never read a book, but sure. You look like him, so I mean... <laughs> I, the homeless people uh, used to call me that all the time. <laughs> Is no, Harry Potter? No, I'm serious. In, in, in Ocean Beach... Uh, uh, Red uh, used to call me Harry. Even when Red was on his worst <laughs> drug binges. Merry Christmas, everyone! When 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 Red was at his worst, Red would always yell from like blocks away, Harry! And I'd turn and he'd wave to me. Oh, Yep. Such a nice homeless drug addict. Vagrant. Vagrant. Um, while, I, while I tweet tweet out about Q&A time coming up soon. Yeah. Um, yeah, what time is it? We should probably move on to Q&A. Yeah, it's, it's 10 o'clock. All right, Q&A. But yeah, Christmas time is coming. Christmas time is near. Um, what do you ask for this year? What do you ask for? I didn't ask for anything. Is it, is it kind of depressing? By the time I got to my early 20s, I basically said my... Or at least eh, 23, 24, I had a decent amount of money because I started to work full time, you know. And I was like, all right. My parents were like, what do you want? I'm like... Well, nothing because I mean, if I really want something, I can buy it for myself at this point. I felt weird. I felt weird asking, and plus, it was sort of like, again, it was like it was, it was just weird. So I always rely. My mom would always like put my stocking, like like little toiletry items, like little travel toothbrush and, and nail clippers, like this is stuff I actually needed, but would think about buying myself. So that was actually cool. Yeah, that see, she would do that. You know, my parents would do gum. Like, got, yeah, started doing stuff like that for me too. Like that's actually it's funny that you mentioned gum. Um, it wasn't gum, but you know, as I got older, because I got a job. And I, I've mentioned this on, I think, the podcast before. I got a job when I was, like, 14. So I also, as well, started buying stuff very, very for myself when I was yeah. very young. Um, so my parents got creative. They knew I liked candy, so they'd go out and buy really fancy chocolate and stuff and just stuff yeah, my yeah. stocking full of fancy chocolate. Um, I loved I loved the little, uh, like, the Christmas uh, peanut butter cup right. uh, uh, tree. Stuff um, like that. Sure. And then uh, Toblerones are something that I used yeah. to always get in my, bar, in, in, in my stocking. Yeah. Um, I... Uh, Something that I get pretty much every year for Christmas are so the the everyone I love the peanuts that should be probably known at this point. Um, then they're doing the full run, and every year for years now, my grandmother gets me. Every year they do two books, and then they do one box set with the two books in it. My grandma oh. gets me that every year, and I look forward to it every year. I purposely don't buy it just so you know I, I have a Christmas gift. Well, which book is it? Peanuts. Okay. They they've been doing the yearly runs. They've uh, oh, every year has been publishing the and full uh, anthology. And, yeah, so they're already up to I think this year they'll hit ninety. So like this year I'll I'll get more wow. peanuts books. Yeah, they're almost done and I've got everything up to their hardcover. Yeah, they're hardcover. Like the Calvin and Hobbes one I have, like the anthology. Yeah, I, I've, I've, I've read so. I've read thirty years worth of peanuts. Wow. Yep. So I know a lot about peanuts. <laughs> um, That's why you love it. And then when. When you're a kid, you kind of hate gift certificates, right? Because you want something um, on that you want something that day. But now yeah. I love them, like no, because great. because because I buy stuff. My mom doesn't know what records I want, so she just gets me a, a gift certificate for the local record store. She 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 calls up Rick and says, "Hey, Rick, you know, have a gift certificate ready for Ian when he walks in the door." So, and then I just buy yeah. I, I buy records for free for a day. So I think my parents gave me or my sister did a fifty dollar GameStop card from last year. I still have it. I never used it. I should probably use it at some point. You should. But yeah, now gift certificates are great. They're great. Sometimes uh, my attention wanders near the end of a, a podcast, and I can't remember how I got on this. Uh, I got on the discussion from Big Bang Theory, but I told Pat about Pauly D. And his recent shenanigans? And his recent as shenanigans. As an Italian American, and I don't think I, 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 I liked what I was hearing, Ian. So this was my reaction on the Best of the CU podcast. I see it as it's positive to normalize like this geek stuff. You're not just nerds that sure, like zombie good. stuff, and but there's still caricatures, right. and there's still heavy stereotypes of of socially uh, socially bankrupt characters that oh we don't know how to talk to girls and we're right. not into sports at all and uh you know like we only like geeky things you gotta be a mathematician to also like video games and geek shit and it's like that's not what people who like these things are right that's that's like a, a 35 year old stereotype that doesn't really exist anymore and even back then wasn't really you know what I mean like it, it, it more existed back then but that wasn't really the people that were following that sure 
so that's what always bothered me about it because like frank watches the show so i gotta think that frank thinks that all these people that are into video games and and you know into this geek stuff and anime stuff we're all just fucking losers that will never have sex in our lives you know like is that really what we want that message to be so it is kind of insulting it is almost like a jersey yeah. shore thing to me yeah all the people that go to jersey shore are guidos all the people that that like Legend of Zelda are sexless. Did dorks. you see Pauly D like two weeks ago? Was at a club with a fucking. He was on stage handing out cannoli, on a stage on a platter while someone in a fucking full-on Mario costume was on stage waving an Italian flag. All right, that's my line. All right. I'm an, okay, fuck you for misrepresenting Italian Americans. I always thought it wasn't going to bother me ever. Sopranos didn't bother me that much. Now I'm fucking bothered. Pauly D. Fuck you, Pauly Paul D. Pauly D. Pauly D was at a fucking club. Now you're on my Jersey. fucking radar. Yeah. Holy shit. Are you serious? Because I get made fun of sometimes by, by people. I won't say who my friends are. I get made fun of with Italian stereotypes. And you ain't fucking helping, you piece of shit. So I'm going Jersey on a Pauly guy from Jersey. D feeds and, I'm really, and I'll tell you what, you, you son of a bitch. I'm really from Jersey. You're not, you Staten Island fucking... Pauly oh, D okay, feeds... No, it's okay. I shouldn't say that. Some people from Staten Island are nice. Pauly but D feeds saying? cannolis to fans at Miami Club. Are you serious? Yeah. Why don't you just throw up b b bowls of pasta while you're at it? Why don't you have b b bowls of spaghetti? Or, or, fuck. Oh, God, I didn't see that picture. He's just fucking piping the, the cream. Oh, my God. Hold on. Which I, one is Pauly D? The one with the blowout? There, there's the picture I saw. He's fucking out on the runway. He's you got, gotta be fucking he's kidding me. Got a tray there's a guy cream. in a Mario costume with an Italian flag. An Italian flag. I hope Nintendo comes after you for that. I mean, what the fuck? Is but you see what shit? I mean? Okay. So, you see how I'm upset I'm getting? I think a lot of people into geek stuff should be upset somewhat at... Should be somewhat upset at, at the Big Bang Theory for that shit. But that's a lot worse than that. Holy shit. Thanks, Ian. I was, I was having another semi-panic attack now. But it's okay to make fun of us. Call us all fucking goons and mafiosa and we all eat cannolis and shit. What the fuck? Son of a bitch. Having all spray tans and GTL. Fucking assholes. Right, I'm annoyed now. I'm annoyed now. Thanks, Ian. Dropping this on me. Well, yeah, I mean, we were talking about it. No, I mean, it was all over but that's, Twitter. But that's it reality. Was all over that's Twitter. reality, though. It was all over Twitter. I'm going to start a hashtag. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get righteously outraged now at this. Kill Pauly D? No, I'm not going to do that, Ian. You can't do that. But Jesus Christ. Enough's enough. By the way, I've been going through some, some Sopranos clips on, online. And you know what? Sopranos is more like a dark comedy the more I looked at it. It's not really, you know, I don't think many people really took that seriously. The fucking subtitles to these pictures. Thanks, Ian. I'm, I'm throwing off now. All right. So uh, that's it for this CU podcast. I'm going to go have some, uh, my Sri Adele. I'm going to have, uh, you know, some Gabagool. <laughs> <Maybe>. <laughs>
of Superman in that movie looked dark. like a beaten, whipped emo boy <laughs> who had... I mean, it was dark. The fucking statue... Gray tones. The fucking statue with the words false god fucking <laughs> spray-painted on it. I nearly barfed. I'm like, what are you trying to make? Uh, yeah, uh, positive things? Um, the Batman suit looks cool. And I liked uh, the voice modulation for Ben Affleck. I thought, I thought the modulation only made sense because he was in that sort of... Dark, it was like the Dark Knight Returns. It, it was a Dark Knight Returns suit. If you read the Dark Knight Returns at the end, yes. that's the suit. I like. Yes. has on. And and I I liked that suit. I liked the way Ben Affleck looked. And, but it's everything so somber. Yes. And end of the fucking world. world. Can we have Superman save a cat out of a tree or something? Can we just? Does everything have to be gray toned? And uh, for, I'm just gonna say it. I know Affleck. He's redeemed himself with with the new movies the past few years. Uh, the Town. Um, he had the one he won the Oscar for for best uh, director. Uh, which is the case right now because I'm really tired and sweaty because we don't have the fan in the room. Anyway, he, he's redeeming himself. I don't buy him as Batman still. I still don't. I'm sorry, I don't. Uh, he's he's given this grim look at the suit. I don't buy him yeah. as, as a, the psycho, you know, a psychotic vigilante. I just don't. Why am I trying to find nice things to say about this? I don't know. It's definitely a sign of a turn in my head, which is fine. No sunshine in this trailer at all. But there way. isn't. The, the, the whole thing is just dark bullshit. Like I said, the only nice things I can say, I like the Batman suit. People people were comparing it to the Lego Batman, which is so funny because it does look like it a does, Lego Batman. It actually does. <laughs> now I'm not going to be able to look at it that way. It's, I'm it's not, not going to be able to look at it anymore. Like the chin strap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, big, the, big set, the big ending to this is the Batman suit. Again, this is like the end of Dark Knight Returns. Uh, the graphic novel, which I wish they ever made. Oh, actually, I gotta see the cartoon still, a uh, cartoon movie. But he, uh, Affleck Batman with the voice modulator, which is, I guess is better than Christian Bale doing it yes. and, and losing his voice somehow. Do you bleed? You will. will. Then why are you asking? Yeah. If you know the answer, Does, is Batman the type that would actually say something like that? Now I think about it. No, I don't think so. He wouldn't. He doesn't taunt his enemies. He just kicks the shit out it, of well, them. That's what I was gonna say. In Dark Knight Returns, I remember them basically just. Batman didn't say a word. In his head, he yeah, was thinking... They, they just threw down. Finally, after all these years, Clark, yeah. fuck you. But he didn't say anything. They just threw down. They just fought. Again, uh, not, great. Snyder doesn't even get Batman. You think he he doesn't get Superman, he doesn't get Batman there. No, he doesn't get either of them. And, uh, well, this he, is what I don't get. He's not going to get a fucking... I don't care. This is, this is for all the comic fanboys about the way if Batman has preparation time, he can defeat anyone. And all it needs is some kryptonite. I don't fucking care still. A Superman versus Batman fight is not exciting to me. It's just, I mean, it's not. Because you you know that Superman's holding back, and he can kill Batman in a, in a nanosecond if he wants to. And you know where it's going to go. You know that the fight's not going to fucking mean anything. They're going to team up. Because they're going to team up. It looks like this movie's going to be about... You have uh, Jesse Eisenberg's Lex Luthor saying some stuff, and I don't buy the voice. He still sounds like that kid... You know, the, the, the kid from, you know, uh, Zombieland. Mm -hmm. I was confusing with Michael Sarah because to me, they're the same person. <laughs> but, um... He says, you know, oh, they're going to turn on you because you're more powerful, blah, blah, blah. I, I don't think, first of all, I don't think, was Superman ever let a statue like that get built? He, would he be comfortable with that? Anyway. No, I don't think he, and that's the other thing. People don't get it. I don't think he'll, yes. I don't think, he wouldn't let people. Look at him as a god. They, right. In the beginning where they're talking about this, Superman wouldn't let people hold him in that esteem. He would disappear. Sure. He would come back to save you, but. I mean, he, Superman's not, yeah, he, 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 that's not what he's looking for. So I'm not saying this whole DC universe cinematic continuity is going to be a failure, but, but again, Snyder is not the guy to hold it in your palm, in the palm of your hand. He, he just isn't. Well, there are people out there who fucking love the guy, but I, I have to question their taste. So we'll see you again in three, four months of the Comic-Con trailer comes out oh, for more Ian commenting. When the hell is this coming out? Can it just be over? GameStop at one point announced in 2015 they're going to announce a pilot program to buying and selling retro games. This was before they did their whole initiative. Ian and I might have been a little skeptical about that. Listen now on the Best of the CU podcast. Why not roll right into what everyone has been bothering us to talk about? You know what, guys? Since... If there's anything that we know is a bread and butter to the CU podcast, it's retro gaming news. <laughs> yeah. So you think that when we hear about GameStop starting to accept and, and buy and sell used games... That we're not going to talk about it? 
Of course we're going to talk about it. So we appreciate the thousand tweets and messages that I got on <laughs> Facebook and Twitter. And it, it. I just, it was funny because some people were like, is there going to be a podcast soon about this? What, are we going to call an emergency <laughs> forum to discuss? We did do an emergency WrestleMania one last year. Right? Yeah, <laughs> sure. But anyways, um, so GameStop is being dumb. Um, I'm going to sound biased, but I think the points I can make here and the points that Pat will probably make will, will show everyone why this is really fucking dumb. They're going to start doing this in two locations. New oh, York pilot. and Alabama. And Birmingham. there's going to be about 250 stores that are doing it. And as of right now, from what I understand, you can go in and sell your old systems. And it was like Nintendo, NES, Super, N Super Nintendo, Genesis, PlayStation, N64, and Dreamcast. So you're talking, you know, late 80s to up to 2000. Right. Era. So they will take it, and they're going to send it to a refurbishing plant. And what they're going to do is from there, they are going to sell the titles online. After testing and repairing. Yes. And, 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 and something I didn't notice that I liked, replacing the batteries. Um, excuse me. They will not be sold in stores, which is something that is actually going to greatly affect what I say later. Um you can go in and you can have an associate help you browse the games online if for whatever reason you yeah, can't computer. fucking browse a, a, an internet page. Yeah. Um, but And they will send them to your door. Which so, is exactly how Funkalan used to do it in the late 90s, by sure. the way. Yeah. So, I, there's a couple reasons why I think this is uh, fucking horrible. Well, there's a lot of reasons why it's yeah, horrible. You go first. There's, 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 there's a lot of reasons why it's horrible. Um, I, I can just go... Um, the prices, GameStop is, okay, selling retro video games is very wishy-washy. There's a lot of fluctuations in prices. Nothing stays the same. So for GameStop to not undersell themselves, for GameStop to make money, they are going to have to shoot for the fucking moon on no. these prices. And it's going, I promise you, these prices are going not, to be insane. Not just shoot for the moon, that means they're going to offer you a hell of a lot less than, than you'd offer even eBay or or a, a mom and pop stop like a pop, mom and pop shop like Luna because it sounds like they're not testing these in stores. So if they're buying a Nintendo for ten bucks, say or fifteen, they don't know if that Nintendo works. They're just going to buy it sight unseen, send it back, and it may or may not work. Actually, so I think one of the articles says that they will they will test hardware. They will only spot check uh, har uh, controllers in games. It was in the it was in the link with the interview. So I I mean they said they will. I mean, here's the thing. Now you're gonna have to train all your employees how to. I mean it's not that hard, but you're gonna train them all how uh, how to hook up all these retro systems. Okay. Test them. Okay. Just dumb. All right. So even if that's gonna be true, or they're gonna test everything thoroughly, which I don't see. No. The cost incurred of shipping this stuff to a plant in multiple areas, probably throughout the country, or a couple, hiring people to refurbish, which is going to have to be done for some of these, replace batteries on a Dreamcast. Maybe there's a controller port that doesn't work all of a sudden. Yeah. You know, stuff like that. Repackaging it up. Putting it online. That's a cost incurred that's going to be passed on to what they can give you. Yeah, exactly. So if they, if they so that that doesn't mean you're not going to be getting, you know, 40 or $50 NESs. Oh, no. Right. That's not going to happen by any stretch of the imagination. No. And, 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 and I can offer you 25 cash for an NES. I can offer you 35 credit. I will eat my words, but I, I'm i going to guess that GameStop's not even going to approach that. No. Um, Absolutely not. Here's another problem with it, it and, and this one is one that I don't think a lot of people are thinking of. If they're only selling online, what is the reasoning for anyone to go to GameStop online to get their retro games when they can do eBay and they can still do trades? You're not changing anything. You're not changing the game. All you're doing is giving, putting another online store up there for retro titles. Uh, uh, my pal Chris Kohler at Wired did a follow-up uh, interview with a, a GameStop representative more details about this, about what will GameStop buy back. They're going to take in any game, console and and first party accessory yes. for platforms any nintendo brand controller they'll take it they aren't interested in third party aftermarket stuff again the knowledge base is, is already going to be limited to what they can have in the, the gamestop system they're not going to be retraining employees about the nuances of knowing label variants and things like that nature um let alone re re you know repros and replacements but we'll get into that later they're going to do a, just a power up test on the hardware okay that's power up say. so i was correct Power up. Does Nintendo turn on? Yes. Well, it's still testing something. 
Sure, doesn't mean that Nintendo works. Does, no. Doesn't mean that Genesis works or that Sega CD works. Uh, visual inspection on the Accenture software. Visual inspection. They're not going to have time to test at a GameStop. Right. 50, someone so, comes in with 50 games like at Luna, they're not going to have time to test 50 games so at a GameStop. They're, furthermore, then, like you are saying, then, if they're only doing the power-up test, that means they're going to offer you even less because they have to yes. assume. They, they, they have gonna, to, a business like them, they have to assume it's broken, they're gonna assume, They're, they're going to assume probably 10% don't work. Something like that. Yeah. This is the first thing I thought. I got broken consoles. I'm taking them to GameStop. Yep. Why not? You're going to take them? Okay. Give me 10 bucks for my broken uh, Nintendo. It doesn't matter. It's worthless to me now. Um, what happens after that? Um, they're going to reach the location. Uh, it looks like Grapevine. Um, thorough evaluations, like I said. Testing, re repair if necessary. These are all costs that are going to be passed on to the consumer, by the way. Uh, make sure that it functions. Check the batteries. Blah, 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 blah. Um, this is disheartening to me. If a, battery needs, uh, if a battery needs replacing, they'll do it before it's off for sale. If something is beyond repair, quote unquote, it'll get junked. Yes. Which is a shame because you can always use parts of stuff. Well, and, and it, and not all systems, not all systems provide usable parts, but there are def there are definitely ones that do. Like any NES that gets junked is going to upset me because I can use the shells, I can use the trays, I, I can use all sorts of stuff from those. Asking since since Chris Kohler is a video game collector like myself, he asks, "What about the condition? How does that come into play?" Uh, there's going to be a single SKU in the system for. Uh, every game, every meaning game. condition will not matter. Yep. Meaning boxes or manuals. Meaning uh, having the disc case for a PlayStation game will not matter. So it'll I mean, be the just. Do you have the game to play in the system? That's all it's going to matter in the system. So again, that will mean that when you buy it online in the system, it will be a crapshoot of what you get. Some people will win. Some people will buy an NES game and get it complete for the same price they have it loose. But you might buy a game, a PlayStation game, and just get the disc and not the case. Yeah. It's going to be a total crapshoot. And that's the only way they can manage this. And, well, right. And, they, you know, the, he, he, he really waffled on that question. I think, it, I think it caught him off guard because he's like, well, if it gets to the point where we have, like, an equal amount boxed and an equal amount loose, then we'll create a separate skew. But it's like... When are you ever going to have an equal amount box or an equal amount loose of a game? Uh, you don't understand the own, your own market he, that you're trying to sell to. The representative said, if it's 98% just cartridge or just disc, we may not need to change anything in the system. But that's if it's like a Genesis game, you know how many Genesis games don't have the case and which do it's 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 like 50-50. Well, and I was going to say Genesis is like right down the yeah, line. It's it's ridiculous why people don't keep the Genesis case. And anyway. it, it is getting to the point uh, where Genesis games in a case are worth more than the oh loose the, ones. oh they're worth like almost double in some cases if not more. Now I mean yeah. eight years ago that wasn't true but now. Um, it's possible that, in quotes, on occasion, somebody will get happy, surprised when they open up the box and find a complete game for the price of a loose one. Um, so they might have to do two listings, they said, eventually, but they're going to, like I said, this is a pilot test. 250 stores, they see, you're going to see how it goes. He asked Chris Kohler, how do you stop fakes? Uh, it's pretty easy to buy a fake label, Chris says, and pass off your worthless crap as rare Nintendo game, especially if the GameStop employees are only doing a visual inspection. So I think this is where a lot of things that we've talked about prior are going to really bite them in the ass, yeah. and they're not going to deal with it. You can pretend like you're teaching your employees visual inspection, but... Half the people that work at GameStop don't even know modern fucking video games. The people who can spot fakes are people like you, hey. and me, and Chris Kohler. Hey, assholes, I think that no one gets hurt when a, a repro Little Samson gets made. Get ready for a lot of get, ass hurt. Get ready about, uh, you're going to think, oh, we're going to be screwing GameStop. Uh, they're going to give us money for our Little Samson. Think about the poor fools are going to order from GameStop and get sent a fake fucking game, potentially. Well, and, and then, you, I mean, know? you know, if that if that sort of thing takes off, you know, then the whole market gets polluted with, with fakes. And, uh, good. Of course, I'm glad I'm getting rid of most of my NES And, collection. of course, people that are in favor of repros are just going to blame GameStop for not knowing it's fake versus the people that are making the fakes. But whatever. Go f fuck yourself. So, yeah. That's... Um, so, that's going to be iffy. Um, they're probably not going to train them on variants. I don't think they're probably going to have different SKUs for the, the different two different versions of Metroid. They probably won't, you know? Like, and what if the price start bouncing for one versus the other? Well, this is what... Great, okay, greatest so, hits versus regular versions. So this is, you know? this is bringing it back to kind of what I... Like, the first thing out of my mouth when I found out. GameStop is like a very large... Or is, is like a person trying to get through a very small door. That's what, that's what retro game sales is going to be like for them. They can't maneuver. An independent store... 
for lack of a better term, has agility. You have to be able to bend and adapt yep. very, very quickly when you're selling retro games. If you want to make any money, if you want to keep your customers happy, and you want to stay in business, you have to adapt on a day by day basis. Price fluctuations could happen by the week. We change prices on yeah, we change prices on games almost weekly for certain games. So. I just don't think they've, they've got it. Because, well, like I said, the end result of all this is incredibly high prices on all the games. It's incredibly high prices, and they're, they always have to hedge their bets by offering l way less in order to make sure they make money. This is a huge corporation. They have tons of employees. They're paying the people at the refurbished center, paying people, paying for posters to mail all these systems across the country, potentially. You know, and, and so it's... I don't see any benefit... The only benefit I see to this... The only benefit, if you're that if you're that person that ends up getting, you order a game and, and you get the complete version of that NES game that's worth a hell of a lot more. Versus that. That's the, the only person that wins, but that's going to be the minority is, is going to win. Everyone else is going to lose. So I do want to point out that they did say that the return policy is still in effect. So if you get something that you're not happy with, you can send it back. That, but that's well, Are you going to pay for the shipping yourself? Right. Are they, are they going to challenge you if it's an expensive game? It will, it's still such a pain in the ass that it's going to... If if a person has to do that once, they are probably never going to do that again. They're just going to go to yeah. eBay go, that's no. in the condition I want it, I'm buying it. No, plus, like I said, you buy a game you, from GameStop, you, you assume it's going to be real. You don't know you might be getting a fake game or a repro label. Yeah. You know, or... or Throwing this out there, what if what if they get a um, what if they make a skew in the future for complete in box games, and all of a sudden you have a bunch of fake manuals and boxes? Yeah. What if you what if they make a skew for if years online for a sealed version, and now you have fake seals getting resold? The problem you know, is they're entering a it's Pandora's box. They're, well, they're entering a large collector's market, and I don't think they they're, they I don't think that's even crossed the higher-ups mind. No. They're not entering a video game market. They're entering a collector's market. And with a collector's market brings a whole lot more bullshit that in the end, they're going to find they can't deal with. They're, yeah, uh, I don't see this going... Uh, Past pilot. I don't. No, I don't. Um, it's just going to, unfortunately, it's just going to deplete those two areas, uh, Birmingham and New York City, of retro games because people, you know, you, you say that, oh, people... People always say, well, people are smart, they know what they have. Not necessarily. If you see a sign saying you walk past how many GameStops are there versus mom and pop video game stores, 10 to 1, yeah. 15 to 1, 21. If you see a, a sign, you know, say say you're you know, a grandma or something, you know, oh, my grandkid had a N Nintendo. You see a sign that, oh, we'll give you money for your old Nintendo. Oh, I have that back in the closet. It'll be convenient for you to get out, drive, give them the 100 games your grandson had and her son had, and you, you're getting pittance for it. Yeah, you know, versus you making money on it, and versus the games uh, not being shipped off to some detention center somewhere to you know to come back on the market maybe eventually. I wish I had looked, but it's because the pilot program has supposedly started. There's got to be a there's got to be someone out there who's mentioned what they're offering for, for certain prices. games for like Mario hey, Three. I'm gonna throw this out there. What if the, what, what when this pilot ends, they have a ton of inventory? What happens to that inventory? Who are they going to sell that inventory to? Well, same thing with the PS2s. They have no one. They they have never documented what they or they've never said what they're going to do with all those PS2s. So then GameStop just sits on a bunch of shit. And then what happens? Do they try to sell it off to themselves? E uh, yeah, sell to re a reseller, a giant reseller like Lukey Games to buy it all, then mark up the price even more. Or fucking absolute worst case scenario, they junk decide it. it's not worth it for them and they junk it. Yeah, I, I hope they wouldn't do that. But I don't see any positive this at all. Absolutely none. No. And like in in in. in as the owner and I were discussing, um, just on a base level, the fact that it's online only does nothing to differentiate it, no, and does nothing to does nothing to entice people to go to the GameStop website it, to get it. All it does is like, like I said, Funkoland late '90s, early 2000s, when they're still selling games there. It's clicking the see, hey, maybe it'll be a stadium that's become available, yeah. and I can buy it. If it's real and if it's there, you know that's that's also coming down to it. What an absolute mess! You can use your store credit towards it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Remember when people got upset about Jimmy Kimmel for making fun of gamers? I don't, but you know it would jog my memory? <laughs> Watching this clip on the Best of the CU podcast. So Jimmy Kimmel responded to the start of YouTube Gaming. We reported on it. Jimmy Kimmel has a very good late night talk show. I like Jimmy Kimmel. I like him a lot. We're basically be best friends with Jimmy Kimmel. He's not. He's he, he, Name dropping. We hung out a few years ago. I don't know. We played. Ooh, that party was insane. He, like, he likes the 32X. Who would have thought? <laughs> um, so the, during his monologue, he did an innocuous, like, two-minute little jokey video about the launch of, of, of YouTube. And why Gaming. the fuck do people watch Let's Players? 
ba basically it came down to not understanding the let's play market sure and so it was a fake commercial like now coming to youtube you can watch gamers playing games but coming soon you can watch gamers watching gamers watching people playing games so it, it kept pancaking where you had a guy watching a guy watching something else and it was just a silly sort of video where oh it's like you're making fun of let's plays right i've made fun of let's plays before we south park's made fun of let's plays before so apparently youtube and people who like games didn't really like that and gave just the most vitriolic responses and th it was like 90 percent thumbs down to the video well and it i thought i thought it, it was entertaining just because Jimmy Kimmel then responded a few days later saying, oh, I've gotten all this hatred, and then ran through the list of all the hatred he got, and some of, like, you know, people threatening violence against him. Against him. Some were actually funny, he admitted. But okay, he admitted some were funny, but some, I mean, were threatened, threatened violence against him. Some told him to kill himself. And what he even said on a more serious note was, he's like, you'd be surprised at how much of this was aimed at my wife and kids. Sure. And I, I hate, I mean... Everyone bitches about, uh, like, so many video game players bitch about how they're cast in a poor light. Here's an idea. Why not, how, how about we don't fly off the fucking deep end every single time someone says something about our hobby that is even remotely joking or negative? I mean, it's innocuous. The guy doesn't understand games that much. He certainly doesn't understand Let's Plays. I play video games and I don't really understand Let's Plays. I mean, it's just, it, it's stupid and... You know, this is a, a this is mimicking something I read in an article uh, elsewhere. But you know, they made a good point. Um, he's a comedian by trade, right? Okay, this is what he does. He pokes fun at shit every night, politics, religion, sex, all of this stuff. Mm -hmm. And it was the reaction from video gamers that 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 was so intense that he felt the need to address it again on his show. Yeah, he's actually had he's actually upset people enough to actually march in front of his studio. Like he's actually upset people on a much smaller scale. Here's the thing though, he put the video on YouTube. If he didn't, no one would have watched it because a lot of people on YouTube don't watch TV, especially late night. Puts it on YouTube. YouTube is a big chunk of its gaming. Obviously, YouTube gaming there, there's a spinoff site. There's no spinoff site for cars. There's no spinoff site for political talk on YouTube for gaming. Yes, it's a huge chunk. But there are people who. <laughs> who are very much into politics who will watch his show every night and they will probably not agree with him and he probably does not get the same sort of well, bit betrayal that's, hatred. But that's another point about <laughs> it's the audience. I hate to say that's it. That's what I'm saying, yes. Gamers ha have a bad rap and a lot of it's deserved. It's earned because yeah. you act oh, yeah. like fucking babies. Yeah, well, uh, you know, it comes down to individuals being bad. Yeah. Now, if you look at some, I did look at some of the responses, and some were trying to, which I thought was actually cute, trying to explain why Let's Plays were so good, and it's like, okay, you have a big comment, maybe you have YouTube fans, it gets, it gets, you actually get to shine a light on your channel by leaving a comment, because see if people can read it, gets thumbed up, whatever. Um, people are trying to say, well, you watch sports, we watch eSports, it's, you know, it's the same thing. I'm not going to get into why that's kind of silly to say something like that, but whatever. The whole point is that, um... You're yelling at a guy who doesn't give a shit. Right. To begin with. He's getting more material for this. He's his he gets most of his views off a different audience that aren't watching gaming on YouTube. His audience are watching on TV, or maybe they're fans like Conan O'Brien and watching clips like that. But he's being himself, he's not pandering, he's a comedian, he's just he's just going with what he thinks is funny. And you're attacking him like a fucking baby. Yes. Like That's what a, it comes down to. Like a spoiled, rotten is, shit. Are you, are you at the point now, I consider myself... Uh, a gamer in some respects, but that that's not my identity. I think it's a problem with whether it's uh, identity in in politics or in your hobby is that you can more easily get offended when stuff like this happens because to you, that's your entire world. I am a gamer. You are insulting my world. You're insulting me. This is all I have to stake my existence on. And that's a very dangerous place to go. But unfortunately, that's where a lot of people are with their hobbies, where they're just so singularly, singularly minded on what they do and identifying it with who they are being that, and that's it. And this is the result, though. People don't know yeah. how to handle it. Well, people will chime in, I'm sure. And I, I mean, I'm just, it's because I'm, it's off the cuff, but I, I'm hard pressed to think of a hobby because that's what gaming is it's a hobby. I'm hard pressed to think of a hobby that is so treated like a lifestyle which is yes. why i feel like 
uh, the reaction gets as strong as it is because these people spend their entire lives embroiled in the, or entrenched in this hobby, and they feel like their very life is being attacked, and it's not. Yeah, I don't see this happening with sports fans, guys that are like hardcore. I don't see this happening. I, I don't see them reacting the same way as a gamer would. I just don't. No. I, I don't. I, maybe. And, and there are lots of sports fans that will adopt sports. Like uh, they'll, they they will be as into sports as people will be in the games, but. I, I just I don't know how to say it I to, to phrase it properly but it's it, it's all too very personal and I almost feel like there's a lot of gamers who want to be upset there's this persecution complex that I don't feel like has existed since the late 90s well I think in general there's there's sort of this victim persecution uh, complex that social media has encouraged. This could be a side effect of it, but in general, gamers are the most pleasant in their interaction, you know, in online games. Not saying all, but they're not known to be pleasant with each other to begin with, so why would they be pleasant whether they're discussing uh, P- PS4 sucks, Xbox One is better, whether they're discussing uh, uh, you, you know, you suck at this game, I'm better while you're playing. That's the worst trash talk ever. And, and, and chat. But you see what I mean, though? A lot of gaming is, when is competitive by nature, but then it's an ugly side of the competitiveness, and maybe that comes out in social interaction on top of that. Right. I'm just gonna throw this out there, though. I applaud Jimmy Kimmel for not pretending he likes this because he could more easily have gotten if he threw his integrity into the dirt gotten way more fans yeah. by saying oh I like this someone like Conan O'Brien really in my eyes took a big hit now Conan O'Brien does a lot of video game stuff he's playing with developers Conan O'Brien doesn't give a shit about these games I he's never a gamer he, it's very convenient that all of a sudden he starts doing uh, game videos the past couple of years uh, with publishers like like uh, you know he starts playing Mortal Kombat with, with guys in the NFL. All, all, I can all say I'm saying is, is this: I don't I, I I don't know these guys personally. I don't know what they do in their free time. I do agree with you that if Jimmy Kimmel does not like it or does not understand it, which is obviously he doesn't, he is not faking it. But I, I, I'm on, on the other side of the coin. I cannot say that Conan is faking. He's got it. a lot more balls to, in order to say, you know, what, I don't understand it, and I'm going to trash it for a joke. And you know what? The joke was funny. But what so. if Conan actually likes games? Does he have no balls because he likes games and he's doing something that's popular if right you, now? If he liked the games, he, he should have been doing this for the past eight, nine, ten years, and not only because it's popular on YouTube now. That's all I'm saying. He's well, trying to get, you know, you don't, you don't, he's the only guy doing it. You, you don't you don't see. I don't watch this shit either way. I'm just saying. I, I I don't I can't state to know these people personally. But yes, I agree. I don't like Conan, but I just think it's kind of cheesy that he's doing that now. I, 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 just I do I do admit that Kimmel uh, you know took the harder path there. Oh yeah, he always does though. He, he, he back when there was a Conan versus Leno thing. Oh, Kimmel gave Leno so much shit, like oh, the yeah. most out of all of that. Mm-hmm. You know, he he gave more than Conan did. He, he gave him more than than even a Letterman was giving. Oh, he was pretty. Kimmel was v- vicious, going for the he throat. Was, yeah, brutal. it was fantastic. So all right, so it's calm down. Some 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 guy who's you know doesn't care about what you're doing anyway in your hobby. You know, making a joke about it. It's just calm down. Yeah, how is it affecting you? It's not taking away your video games. There seems, I mean... You're not less of a person. (laughs) Whether I'm not even going to go by name, but any any video game controversy in the past, um, like, two, three years, it always seems to boil down to these people thinking that their video games are going to go away or something's going to change. You know what? Nothing's going to fucking change. You're going to get your video games. Jimmy Kimmel's opinion of Let's Plays does not change the fact that next week you can go out and buy Metal Gear Solid. You can still waste your last enti- week. You but- can still waste your entire weekend playing the games if you want to. You can do it. Yeah, it's okay. You don't have to see the sunshine anymore. Sunshine on my shoulder makes me happy. One of the most heartwarming holiday stories on the CU podcast was when a scalper failed to resell 50 movie tickets to the interview. Warms the cockles of my heart. Listen to the failed scalper story on this Best of the CU podcast. So there is a good good news to come out of this. At least this is the heartwarming so, part of the news. This is this is really like warm the cockles of my heart. Guys, this is like a this is like a mug of spiced cider with whiskey. <laughs> this is so great. So some guy Jason Best of Cincinnati, Ohio, went and bought 650 tickets to... No, you know, he bought 50 tickets at 13 apiece. Oh, for $650. Okay, I'm sorry. With the intent of scalping them. for To see the interview. To see the interview. With the express intent. And when it realized that he wasn't going to be able to sell them um, because of these, these alternate methods of distribution, uh, he 
actually tried to return them and they wouldn't return they wouldn't give him a refund yeah and it was because he bought them through which website did he buy them through it could have been movietickets.com i think it was movietickets.com uh movietickets.com specifically states that they do not do refunds no. so so you're not buying it through the theater you're buying it through the website first and foremost yes. Well, two yes movie theaters will not do refunds oftentimes for special engagement showings um these are usually things like concerts that they do one night only or something like that but this was technically a special engagement showing sure. they were going to do it for one night and uh he made no money on it i mean he's out 650 dollars because he thought he was going to be, oh. a, you know, he wanted to be a scumbag. Yeah, this is what's. They interviewed him, and he just looks like. I guess this is the mindset. Here's the. Here's the, this is the conversation we're going to get to, and people are going to be arguing and yelling at us. Is that it comes down to it's capitalism. Do you want to look in the mirror and see yourself being this person? Yes or no? That's what it comes down to. Do you want to be a person that says that see, saw the opportunity of something to say? Well, I think people want to see this. I'm going to fuck them out of money on, on Christmas. That's yeah. basically what this guy tried to do. Yeah. And it failed. Now, he's, now he's supposedly he did do like a chargeback on his credit card, get the money back. But this is the reason why, of course, the movie theater can't allow this. Do you imagine if people started doing this en masse and for like when like Avengers comes out, some asshole buys 150 tickets in a theater and tries to charge like 40 bucks each? And then tries to get their money back. So everyone will lose. People wouldn't be able to see it or they get screwed. And the theaters will lose out on the money due to return tickets. No theater is going to allow scalping of movie tickets. Yeah. It's insane. Especially to when allow that's that. your express intent. Yeah. I, don't, I, I just have everyone listening who leaves us those stupid comments in the comment section about it's capitalism when someone's trying to pull a scam. Well, you know what? It's also capitalism when someone decides to say fuck you to this guy and not buy the tickets. Yeah. I hope I hope everyone who runs the scheme gets fucked. Get fucked. <laughs> get fucked. Yeah, movie theaters actually have the right to to refund at will. They don't have to. Yeah. They really don't have to. And especially if, like, like I said, scalping in movie theaters is no one's going to allow that. No. It's not legal. You can allow how how you want to sell your product to someone. So it's it's just funny that he <clears throat> it, when they interviewed him, he was like, "Well, you know, I knew people were going to see it, so I figured I can make money on this." <sighs> here's here's my problem with whether it's this or amiibos. You talk about one thing with uh, with retro games that people quote unquote putting them in people's hands. When it's a new product, a reseller or scalper is not providing any value, additional value at all. No service. For his, or service for it, raising the price artificially. You are not enabling it to get into someone's home easier. You're not making it more widely available. You're not fucking, you know, putting a, a spit shine on it. You are just taking something out of the market, artificially inflating it and putting it back. A few, That's the biggest problem with something like that. A few uh, podcasts ago, I got into it with someone on the... Uh in the comments section. Um, and uh, they basically refused to see the difference between something like a new product, like a GameCube uh, adapter, mm -hmm. and uh, something like a rare game. Basically accusing, you know, uh, places like Luna Video Games of doing the exact same thing that we're talking about. And it's not. And, and it's because the I mean, why do we even have to fucking I explain this? A mass, no, I, a I, new I, mass I, produced I, item. I wanted to get up and fucking <laughs> smash my face on the, the shelf just now. Why do I have to explain this to someone? Why can you not see the difference? Do you have too much fucking fat in your eyes? Um, pieces of shit. It's it's a different product. It's not on the market anymore. Anyone can go into a store and buy a product, provided that you stupid fucks don't buy them all and charge three times the amount. It's capitalism. Eat my fucking cock. Um, <laughs> you know, it's, it's different. There aren't Super Nintendo games on the market anymore. There aren't NES games on the market anymore. You can't walk into a store and buy them. No one is getting screwed. That's the natural appreciation of price, not the artificial appreci you know, uh, appreciation of price. Sure. So, I mean, yeah, it's the same thing. Sorry, I had to get go off on that. It's the same thing you said about the Amiibos, though. Yeah, you're not adding any value. This person isn't fucking delivering it to your door with a blowjob. <laughs> they're not going down on you. They're not eating you out. It's, it's, I, mean, they're, they're, it, I mean, nothing is happening here that you couldn't get by getting in your car and just going to Toys R Us and paying $13. Thank you, Ian. And that is the difference between a scalper or reseller of a new product versus old stuff that's out of stock. <laughs> All right. So this guy is a piece of trash. What's yep. his name again? Merry Christmas. I take a lot of bad calls at work. Here's an example of one on Best of the CU Podcast.
I'd like to hear about the scum fuck who called the store. <laughs> That's a term that I use a lot online. So, basically... God, I, I drink to forget. Um, there's a regular customer who is very nice. He wanted a Retron 5. He had some trade-ins to make. There was a traffic accident. He couldn't make it. Basically, they got there late. Craig had closed the store. I get a call at, like, 7.59. Hey, are you fucking listening? I'm talking about you. Um, I get a call, and this guy starts chewing me out about how uh, he listens to the podcast, and he's been a regular shopper at the store. No, he hasn't. Uh, for years... And, uh, you know, uh, they should be open, even though it's one minute to closing. And he's going to make sure that he uh, leaves a, a note on the uh, CU podcast page about, uh, you know, how Luna Video Games isn't what it portrays itself to be. And I'm like, well, sir, I'm very sorry. There's nothing I can really do about that. Um, unfortunately, you are threatening me, but I am here and open uh, now minutes after I should be closed, and I do apologize that the other store appears to have closed in maybe a minute early, but there's nothing I can do. So then he asked me if I could stay open for an extra half an hour so he could come down and get the Retron 5, and uh, I said no. I said no, I said I have, I have a personal life, and I have wedding things that I need to plan with my fiance this evening. So he started making fun of me uh, for having a personal life, and uh, for having a fiance that I needed to go see to to do, to to make wedding plans with, <laughs> so um, and he just talked a bunch of shit and basically said he was gonna post on all of your videos and he was gonna post all over the Facebook page about how no one should ever shop here because we're awful. And uh, then the good guy comes in the next day and is like, "Yeah, that's." Uh, that wasn't me, that was my brother. He got my phone, he's a meth head, and he showed us the scar. You stabbed your brother, you piece of shit. Um, stabbed him in the arm. Scar about this wide. About that long. So, <laughs> I'm back on the screen now. Um, so basically what we had was a guy who had an issue with you or something, we don't know why. And has has some issues. Yeah, he oh yeah, he uh, didn't he didn't care. Oh, according to his brother, he didn't care for my opinions on the podcast. Well, I don't care for your opinions either. And I have you here. I don't I don't I don't tell you to stay late for me. Eat my crusty asshole. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> I think your opinions suck too. Is me? I'm going to threaten you. This guy, uh, yeah. So he just gave me the what for, and basically he made himself out to be a very angry customer when in fact he wasn't the customer at all. When his brother had gone to get gas for the car, he well, had grabbed his brother's phone and made a call and chewed me out. And, and this is this is what got me. The, the whole threat of I'm going to post on videos, and it's like, great, we'll block you. Yeah. Or great, or, I'll tell my whole story. But but, but the whole thing is that. And this is not for... Usually the fans in, in person aren't like this. No. But people think because they are, quote, a fan of you, that that can entitle them to treat you like shit. And, know, and, I, to, I, and, and to expect no repercussions for I wanna, doing that. I want to word this differently. Because that's not my my interaction with fans at all. My interaction with people who are fans of the FOD, the FOD, the podcast, <laughs> have always been podcast, really though. great. They, they really have. Yes, And I talked course. about that last week. But this guy decided that he could use that as a weapon. Yes. Oh well, because I, I listen mean. to the podcast, you have to bend to my every yeah. whim. Oh, no. Yeah. Or or else I'm gonna smear you. Where are you gonna smear me? You're gonna make a. <laughs> he threatened to make a YouTube video. Great. Oh, 15, no. Fifteen people will see it. <laughs> yeah. No, no. I think it's. No, but what I'm saying though is that they think they can use that as a shield because that happens to me probably more than you. Where like, you know, they'll they'll leave a shitty comment and I'll respond to it. Or whatever, and they'll be like, "Oh, I'm a fan of yours." Like, I don't give a shit if you, if you treat me like shit. I don't care. I don't care if you bought every one of my DVDs or or you watch every one of my videos. If you do something bad to me or my friends, I don't fucking care. Yeah. It doesn't entitle you to shit. Yeah, it doesn't. It doesn't entitle you to 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 have an audience with me personally. It doesn't entitle you. Uh, it doesn't tell you to treat treat people awful. It just doesn't. No, I mean, and that was the thing. He was totally using it as a weapon because every time I came at him with logic like, well, I'm sorry, but I'm open now, and now I have to close. I'm the one on the podcast, not so-and-so. 
this really this has nothing to do with the podcast. This has really nothing no. to do with the business, actually, because the story we got later was that the reason <laughs> the reason why they were closed is because his brother had to take a piss and couldn't wait. So he took like the, the, the crackhead guy had to take a piss and came out and at like eight fifty nine I was like because I was running late with my paperwork. Treg had closed down, and I was still there, and just you know, because of habit, without looking at the clock, answered the phone and just dealt with this. So fucking... you shouldn't have even answered it, right? I dealt with this word why would, vomit. Why would you answer the phone at two minutes before you close? Well, you know? <laughs> because, like I said, I was trying to do paperwork, and you know, it's just like whatever, boom, and then I get this fucking ear full of garbage. So, so, so be nice to us. Be nice to everyone. No reason to be an asshole. No. Being an asshole rarely gets you anything. It's like the people who are assholes to us in the comment section. It's like, you don't know us, and why do, well, why do we care? Well, that's totally different, though, because to that, to me, that's just them. They can, they can be blowing off steam, or they can just... That's their one chance to be cool with themselves, or to, or to have some sort of little bit of power in their lives. For the most part, I don't care. They're bored I, of sucking their own dicks. That that could be it, too. But, I'm, I mean, but when you, when you threaten people, come on, man... Yeah. No threats. That's just lame. First of all, you're never going to do it. Uh, but, but that's just lame. Ian, remember that one time in the store where uh, you might have seen a little bit too much of a customer that you didn't want to see? Got a big load of dick. Here's Ian's dong story on the Best of the Sea podcast. Saw a dude's penis at work. Okay, so that's that's I that's, mean, a, that's a good lead in. Well, yeah. Why don't you uh, why don't you uh, <clears throat> pretend we didn't know that fact, Toyd, and let's lay out the story. Let's theater of the mind for everyone. I mean, unfortunately, it's a pretty quick story, but um, should I just title this "Ian sees a penis"? Ian and sees a penis. That, I think that'll get flagged for for uh, advertising on YouTube. You're right. I can't do that. I can do that. So um, Ian sees some genitalia. Yeah, genitals. Um, <laughs> I'm at work, and um, you know it's a day. It's uh, the holidays, and things are happening. And a guy walks in, and he's trashed. I mean, just he's very, very drunk. Um, his every every word is a breath with him, and he's wearing very loose basketball shorts. And he comes up, and he goes, "Is that a PS4 Pro that you have in the case?" And I'm like. Yeah, it is. And he and he's like, cool, can you tell me about it? And I said, absolutely. So I get up, and I walk to the end of the counter because it's the closest in the case. So I'm pointing to it, and I'm talking to him about it. And he's like, oh, okay. And he's like really like acting like he's taking this all in, but I can see it bouncing off. And uh, we walk back, and I sit down, and he's talking to me more about it. And he goes, you know, he's like, so you really need, like, a 4K TV to experience the benefits of, like, a PS4 Pro or, like, a, you know, an Xbox One X. And I'm mm-hmm. like, yeah. And the whole time, he just continuously keeps pulling these shorts up. I'm like, this is going to be a problem. No drawstring on these? I, I mean, there was. He just wasn't utilizing it. Okay. And I wasn't. The problem was I was just noticing, like, every time they kind of sunk a little bit lower and he was pulling them up, like, I didn't. You knew it wasn't going to hold. It was fleshy, and I knew it wasn't going to hold. And, uh, yeah, eventually, I mean, they just fell. They fell. So it was <clears throat> was it like a, like, a, like a tree getting toppled where they just came down, or was it like slowly like, oh, my God, I could stop it, but it's in slow motion, and you couldn't do anything? Uh, it was, you know, it was like slow-mo for me. <laughs> but I'm pretty sure Like a happened. Bugs Bunny thing where they pull yeah. up their skin? Yeah, and <laughs> exactly, and they hit about knee length. <laughs> so and, no drawers, no drawers, no boxers. He, he was straight up commando. And uh, what team? What team was that? Was was there a team logo on these shorts? No, they, they were just basketball style <laughs> shorts. You know that the mesh. that mesh style. And um, oh man, there he was, just hanging dong, right there. So what was his reaction? Uh, very nonchalantly looked down, grabbed his shorts, pulled them up, and go, oh, man, I didn't want that to happen. And then we continued on. And, uh, the thing was... Is he so did- is this backwards compatible, this PS4 yeah, Pro? How yeah. did you continue on from that reveal? He didn't leave. He stayed for, like, another five minutes, and I was just like... Answering your questions? I'm answering your questions. <laughs> just gonna answer your questions. 
was like, was he a potential buyer? You think was was he actually interested? Was it the weight of all the cash in his wallet bringing down those shorts? I I just don't know. I mean, it was one of those situations where what do you do when a man shits? You've just seen his penis in the middle of the store, but you know you don't think he. It wasn't a purposeful exposure. You don't think it was a romantic ploy? No. No, I don't think so. (laughs) I don't think it was like, let's see if this works out. I just think he was drunk and used to having his penis shown off in public. And that was that. He walks out, holding up his... uh, After after another, like, five minutes of questions, he just walks out and leaves. Interesting. Mm -hmm. And I'm the one who has to pay for it. (laughs) You you have the PTSD to to show for it. (laughs) How, How many times a year do you see some nudity at the store? Um... Female or male, I'll just say. I've seen some nip, and I've I've, I've seen, You've seen some nip. I've seen sneak some, out. I've seen some nip, and I've you know I've 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 seen you know some chestnuts, you know and chestnuts. Yeah, you know you, you some you, balls you, hanging to the side, uh, maybe. Yeah, you know a little a little things sure. things are a little sheer, but I've never seen the full fucking cotton cabbages. I mean that's. <laughs> The full, the full twig and berries. <laughs> the full twig and berries. Yeah, that's, yeah, right. that's a bit much. <laughs> oh, that's interesting. Yeah. Thanks for listening to this Best of the CU Podcast. We'll see you next time.